Good evening, now time is 6 of all. Let me call to order the special joint workshop by and between the Town Council and 4A EDC Board of Directors and 4B EDC Board of Directors. For the record, all council members are present except Mr. McNeil. McNeil uh, will probably miss the uh, workshop unless it runs late. Terry? Um, I want to call the 4A portion of the meeting to order. All members are present. We do have a quorum. I will call the 4B <coughs> board members uh, present for this meeting. All are present except Member Van Bessem, Member Bradford, and Member Torres. We have a quorum? Yes, we have a quorum. Tracy, what do you want to this one? Can you tell us how the 4A? Um, so first of all, thank you all for attending tonight. We kind of started this joint work session to talk about some items that have been on the strategic plan for the economic development boards and just trying to get some feedback from council on how to move forward on some items that we kind of have outstanding and seeing what everybody's thoughts, opinions, um, ideas, concepts are to be able to move forward. Um, with that being said, I've printed out the agenda and we'll kind of go down the line for the agenda. Please don't freak out for those that have seen the slideshow. I've got together like a hundred slide slideshow, but the only reason it's that way is to accommodate for any thoughts, questions that I've heard about, I've um, had discussions with others about, so that way it's in here and there's pictures, there's, um, visuals so that everybody can get an idea of the way things will grow, the way things could possibly be, doesn't mean we'll go through every single slide individually. Um, Are we going to go there that presentation before we get to the agenda? No, it, the presentation is kind of just goes along hand in hand with the agenda, so as we talk about things we can go through certain slides. Um, and so what we're kind of doing, even though we've called the B, uh, well, there is a public forum section, so I don't know if anybody in the public. Uh, let, let, let me call. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry. We have, a we have a public forum poster. If anyone would like to come and talk to the, the boards and uh, council, you may do so at this time. That'll be you, Derek. <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. If there's any confusion, <laughs> that's you. Yeah, just turn it on at the bottom. Is it on? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm Derek Salser, 345 New Hope Road, Sunnyvale. Thank you to all three organizations, 4A, 4B, and Council, for your support of Next Door's project. We are almost a month into construction, uh, which means uh, maybe just two weeks in because of all the weather uh, challenges we've had. But so far, so good, and uh, I hope we're being a good neighbor, and as always, let me know if something um, is, doesn't look right, come, my number's on that sign out there, so give me a call, uh, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek. No one is coming forward, so I'm going to close the public forum. Can I tell us back all your tracing? Sure. So I've, even though we've called 4B to order at this point, most of their conversations um, are going to be towards the downtown development and further, so it'll just be a discussion right now between the 4A and town council. And with that, I will hand it over to Ms. Terry. Okay, as you look at the agenda, some of the things that, that the 4A board wanted to talk about was just our day-to-day -day activities that we want uh, to put into our plan, our strategic plan. Um, uh, one of them is business retention and expansion, or what we call BRI. Um, we're talking about hosting a BRI event. Um, we were going to try to do that in January. Um, but we put that off um, till probably the summer of 2019 because we want that to be the first event at the barn at Long Creek and kind of partner with her and bring a, a nice event to um, her facility. Um, and then uh, Tracy's already started hosting roundtable events. Um, they had a, a realtor one and a primary industry one. Um, I'm not sure which ones you're working on next. 
Uh, right now we're focusing on another industry roundtable. There was two of our industries that attended the one that we hosted and they thought it was such a good idea to be able to come back for so they want to see another one in January so it's put on their calendars for January to be able to have another one for that. Tracy, what's the end goal of this round table? So, what, what do you hope to accomplish? For the industry roundtable specifically, what the goal is for that is that it's peer-to-peer -peer interaction as well as being able to develop that right relationship between town staff and our primary industries. So what came out of the one we had was that we have a lot of workforce issues and it's not just here, it's we need skilled laborers that just aren't available right now at this point in time. So. Um, being able to work with them and get the workforce commission out here to be able to help them and see how we can move forward and what they see as trends going forward. Um, also in that meeting, we had our building official and uh, planner in there, so if they had any development questions, that they could talk to them directly and kind of get some of those things that they had questions on. Um, when it came to the realtor round table, it was just kind of a point of building those relationships, seeing who our realtors are, telling what's going on in Sunnyvale so that they can go out and preach the things that we're doing because those the realtors are our first-hand people. They're out there selling the homes, they're out there selling land, and so if we can keep them up to date on what's going on in Sunnyvale, then they can better spread what's going on. Do they come back and tell us during the event what is it that council or the town can do uh, so that they can bring in the type of developments we wish we had a town. Not just a bunch of houses or apartments, but sure. rather quality in the system we're talking about. Most of the ones that attended that were residential realtors. Um, and the biggest thing that helped them was just being able to have some maps of the different developments, residential neighborhoods. So we put together a bunch of maps for them to be able to take and show the properties and people whenever they're coming in. Okay. So I don't have feedback as far as development from that specific. I could tell you, as being attending that event, it, it kind of grew out of something that Skeet does every year, and they get a large turnout for that, and it's a great presentation. They get the superintendent, police chief, mayor, uh, I forget who else in there, and it's a tight program. I took Tracy to it this year to see what it's like, and it can be a great information source. Now, we're different. We're a much smaller town, and the realtors that work in here, there's a handful that do a lot of business, and then some you know, not, not as much. So it's hard drawing people in from much around the area, but it but it's, can be a very useful time. And I thought it was a great launch to something that hopefully is an annual event that we can do that. So, do that. so is the composition of the group, for instance, this past meeting that you had, was the composition of that not only town staff and whoever we represent out of it, but did it also include some existing industry uh, people so that they could talk with potential new people who would have come to that round table? Or were there ever any new people that were invited from the industry side? From the industry side, it was only our existing businesses. Okay. So we had um, Vince Hagen and Nick Elroy Metal that came. Um, so, I mean, the idea of that is just to build the relationships build the with relationship. our with our existing employers. So in future meetings, would it, would it be broadcast in such a way that other Possible industries would be, hey, let's, you know, Sunnyvale's going to have this round table we have. Maybe we ought to go look at it and see. And then also, if you've got good, if we have good rapport with the Vince Higgins, I think we do, and other the businesses, and I apologize, I can't call them out, but that we have some of their people who are on the positive side, which I think is the majority, as being. You know, they can be their own group that talks. And maybe that's not what the intent of the roundtable is, but I'm just trying to get the word spread of the positive vibe that you get not only from the, our town staff, but you also get the positive vibe from uh, existing uh, businesses within the community. And it, it could. Um, I think what it originally set out to be for was just for our businesses. Um, and then essentially what will come of that is that if they feel the positivity from the town, then they can go out and market them 
yeah. so I can use them as advocates to be able to attract other employers. Because one of the things that economic development corporations do is have business retention and expansion programs because we want to take care of our existing businesses. We don't want to lose them. Um, several years back, Marazzi Tile expanded, and that was a good thing that we kept them. They were thinking about moving out of town. And so hosting these things or just to find out what our existing businesses need from us um, and trying to keep them here. And the Walker Line is a good example of that. Yes, and Things I was going to mention major, that, yeah. A major mm -hmm. point for business retention was the Walker Line. All right. Yep. And that's, one of the, that's why we participated in that, because the industrial park is, is, a, is a big part of our property tax base. So do, does, does council have any comments on, the, on I, I that section? Okay. Give some feedback from the business people that uh, things, regulations, and things of the nature, council can look into these uh, from from back. Same with the journey. I think you have a broad network with your job and Chamber of Commerce, if you hear things. What is it that we can okay. Obviously, we have some monuments we want to work around, right? Because, you know, he mentioned the city of Mesquite, and just because they're our neighbor, they have like a quarterly BRE. Mm -hmm. That I get invited to as because Encore has a has a business in Mesquite. So, any any other comments or or questions? No, I just personally think we've got to we just got to really reach out to those businesses, make them feel wanted. Really, can we partner with you? What can we do to help you? Really create that positive vibe. I think is is a great thing to press to do. It's, it's, it's starting, and some of it's been there, I know, in the past with different people, but we have a real emphasis for it. So do you think what we're doing right now is good enough, or we have to do more than what you do? I mean, with something like this, in my opinion, you've got to, you've got to kind of ease into it. I, I say quality over quantity when it comes to that kind of stuff. Do a good program. Don't do a bunch of them just for grins, is my opinion, but by all means. I mean, I guess the other, sorry, Kevin, the... You know, you're taking that a step further. So I have lunch and just stuff one-on-one -on -one with the industries, too, to find out what we could do for them or find out more about their business and just kind of building that relationship with them um, so that if there ever is an issue, and um, development services will tell you they get frustrated because sometimes they do have relationships with me that they pick up the phone and they call me and sometimes don't go to who they need to go to. So then it's... Well, have you talked to developed services and getting it back on track to where you know I can kind of facilitate some of that? But I, they're the ones you need the answers from. Um, and then working on surveys to establish where they are now to date, so that when we look at them in a year, we also find out if there's any red flags on them closing down, or are they looking at expanding and kind of making sure we're ahead of the game on any of that stuff that they're doing. How do you decide what industries we go after? Like, are you, you Looking at restaurants, you know the restaurant industry, um, you know the um, other other types of industries. So we can move right on into okay, recruitment, okay. and that's kind of um, our target industry. So we kind of we have a lot of aerospace here. We have a lot of manufacturing, more so. It's heavy industrial considered, but you wouldn't know it from being out there. Um, retail, it, restaurants. All of that is being looked at right now. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of an open canvas on what we have here because it's a broad base from heavy manufacturing all the way down to primary medical office space. I know nobody likes to hear medical office, um, but some of the things that the retailers look at are daytime population numbers. And you'll kind of see get a sense for some of that, we have our current daytime population is only about 5,100. But when you look at what retailers are looking at, and you can't see it in this chart, but their daytime populations range from 6,000 for a tropical cafe smoothie place up to 75,000 daytime population for the Madelines. So when we're looking at what we can get here, then you're kind of having to look at some of those demographics and those numbers as well that the retailers are looking at. We have the vehicles per day um, and some of this other stuff you'll see that we kind of have, here's our three mile radius. We have some of the numbers that we need as far as population within that, but if it's a lunchtime crowded um, retail, then 
they need the daytime numbers. So that's where we're trying to get those things that everybody doesn't want, really medical, office space, those are things we need to be able to justify some of those numbers. And we definitely want to recruit uh, restaurants and entertainment and retail. I'm not sure why that's not part of that recruitment list on the agenda. Uh, more, more so for, so right now because we're under 7,500 in population, 4A and 4B can do the same thing. But when we hit that 7,500 mark, then they split off and 4A will not be able to do retail recruitment things for the retail restaurant side of things. So I've tried to go ahead and split the two in that concept so that we're kind of looking at it differently, if at all possible. So really what 4A does is they focus on the primary industries. 4B focuses on retail restaurant side. So that's why um, the, that portion of it wasn't in the recruitment side for the, for the 4A. I do see that under 4B, sorry. What's our current population? Our current population, we're saying is about 6,400. Now, you won't see that in the information or the data that has been provided. So in 2015, which is kind of interesting, in 2015, um, and it's not on this one, in 20, this number is from 2017. They're saying that our 2017 estimated population was 5640. Well, where all our documentations uh, Rashad and I have gone back and forth on this. All of our documentation so, show closer to 6,200. Um, and we've kind of fought it. Um, but right now, that's all that they have physically been able to show that is available. Um, in 2015, there was another number that came about that was actually higher. Don't look at that number because that's a three mile radius. But the 2017 data showed up less population than the 2015 data did. So they're actually doing another study for me right now, but it won't be done for another week to just see where that difference is. Um, because they went back through everything that they could think of and they could not figure out why the data was uh, The retail coach. We hired the retail coach back in 2015 and then hired them again in 2017. And now they're, um, for no cost, they're gonna do a 2018 one for us as well. Where does their school district get their data? I could have sworn I'm on the facilities through the school district, and I think their numbers are quite a bit higher. They had a demographic study done, I know, last year, in Christ, that's what they based those freezing nickels coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for it now, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. I had this and I think freezing nickels on the comp plan showed. Um, January 2017, they showed the population at 6,044. Mm -hmm. yes, I think Fraser Nichols probably some information on school. <coughs> and so that was where some of the retail coach said that some of the numbers, if you do zip code only, then you get one number. If you do maybe the school district boundary, that was another number. If you do. Sunnyvale. Is it the boundary should be the same. Okay. Yeah. The, um, there was another number. Anyway, there was another number that pulled out that it was different that they were ringing up. It was zip code and then something else. Okay, so the warm line needs to be on the same. Anyway, we're around 61, 6200 probably. Yeah. And you got to get 7500 for that? No, that's just to separate the two. Um, no, I'm talking about the, the daytime business. No, the daytime population should be over 10,000 at the minimum. Um, so I have a question for you. And it has to be before we try to target a daytime operation, will we ever reach 10,000 population in Sunnyvale realistically? And if so, how far out is that? Because I think that dictates the, the direction that you're going to go with that. Now, that there's a difference between daytime population and the population. Okay. So your daytime population is your workforce who's coming here to be able to provide those numbers. It's not necessarily your residential population. Okay, so let me re-ask that then. How's that, how, what is our daytime operation numbers now? And again, how far off are we, are, are we from that? 
Okay. So our approximate daytime population right now is 5,100. That's probably mainly in the, in the industrial park and the hospital. Mm -hmm. So a lot of retailers and especially restaurants will look at, especially for lunch, how many workers, what's your daytime population, how many people are going to come eat at my restaurant on so their I lunch break. The, I think the question then is what does it take and how long does it take if we get to the, the magic number of 10,000, he's doubling our daytime population. If it's going to have to double before we can see a, a marketable increase, then the question would beg to be asked, are we going the right direction if we're pushing that? All three questions. You don't have the answer for that? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of, so the reason Quick Trip is coming is because they feel like the vehicles per day along 80 are going to justify what they need. Um, so with their numbers, with them coming in, with um, Chick-fil-A coming in, hopefully some of that will drive other people to see that there is a market for that particular area. And some of those numbers are still, we do have the residential trade area numbers. We do have the vehicles per day. So we have 75% of what they're looking for. It's just that daytime population number that becomes the kicker. Thank you. Okay. You want me to go ahead and, and move on then to the. Is that circle or is that Sunnyvale? The circle. So you're going to have to look outside of Sunnyvale proper and look at your trade area, which encompasses some of the city. Um, so there's a different. So this is considered our trade area map currently. I think it's all the creek crossing, but it looks like. So how far is that going? It's not even getting to 635, right? No, sir. Because most of 635 is already taken care of by all the restaurants and stuff along 635. So they won't encompass any of that because it's our, the retail is already in those areas. So that is our trade area. And then if you just draw a three-mile radius around Sunnyvale, you look at that. It's actually a three mile radius from the intersections of Collins and Eight. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Which doesn't even get all of Sunnyvale. Which doesn't get all of Sunnyvale. But, and, and I can send this to everybody afterwards, but in, when you see then in the little numbers you can't see, you'll see laid out some of the ones that talk about the residential population within how many miles or within the trade area and the same thing with daytime population within how many miles and so that's when the maps really come into play on what your drive time is your trade area or your radius so there's several different ways to look at it and it depends on what that actual retailer is looking for are they looking for a 15 minute drive time that's more your regional type restaurants or retailers is it just a one mile radius where you see mcdonald's or starbucks on every corner so it just depends on the different retailer you basically i don't have an item number one but just one quick question and so if you're trying to bring businesses to the ad and collins area which makes sense then this three mile radius makes sense because you also have a shopping area on the line on both sides. Mm -hmm. If you draw that three mile radius, I'm assuming it's going to be a completely different picture, right? That one will encompass Gar some of Garland, right? Some yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. unless, unless the argument is that Garland and existing business, existing business already served that population and there's not much to draw. Right, I guess who, so following upon what he's asking, who creates this, and then is this what we take then to the potential businesses that want to come in here, and we put it, we package it up and say, hey, here's Sunnyvale, here's how pretty we are. Yes. Is that is that what we do? Yes. So is there a way to strategically move that circle around for different areas, for different types of businesses, yes. whatnot? Can we use Town East for the center of the circle? Yes, you know, so right. the retail coach has done that, and they based it on different areas, but this one was focused kind of on the eighty and Collins corridor, because that's kind of where our focus has been. So that's why these are more to that area. But yes, they can potentially put a three-mile radius around Bell Line and County store, a trade area, or a drive time around that area. So we can 
definitely maneuver these numbers based on area. The three mile <coughs> three mile areas overlap each other. They do. And again, it just kind of depends on what type of restaurant it is or what they're looking for and how they want to use that data. So a lot of what may seem in the three mile area on Town East and uh, Belt Town East and Beltline, we're not going to go out there because it's already right down the street. So it's just a matter of kind of then taking all that data and seeing what's there, what's left to recruit. So are there retailers that draw from a larger radius? Yes, so like your Cracker Barrels, uh, those that are more of a regional destination place as opposed to your everyday retailers. Is it possible to target more like that? Yes, which is the hope of what Sunnyvale Center is, it's more the regional destination draw. That's what the hope is. And isn't it going to depend on where that business or restaurant wants to locate as to what radius they're going to look at? Correct. They all look at something different, so it's yeah. just a matter of figuring out what, they, what they're looking at. Is the retail coach a consultant we use or software? Yes, it's a consultant. A, consultant. Yeah. a lot of EDCs use them, either them or Catalyst. We have somebody under contract that does all the They're a good organization. A lot of EDCs use them. And we just use them periodically whenever we need some data or information. Good. So you only have eight more items. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to top priorities. Um, beautification, um, gateway signage, um, and the industrial park. So what the, the 4A board talked about was wanting to add some additional signage, like the sign there you see up there that we have here out at 80 and Collins, maybe on Beltline Road, and some type of signage to show that you're entering Sunnyvale. Um, and then another thing we talked about was doing some beautification to the industrial park. And we talked to David Jackson about partnering with him, doing some stuff inside the park as well, but maybe some stuff on the median out there, because that is a gateway into town. And, and if that were spewed up a little bit, it would just make the town look better as a whole. Um, and I don't want to do all the talking, so you guys, anybody... I, I know we've job. been talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've been talking about uh, beautification and gateway signage for a while. Yeah, so. I, I think branding is very important, and that's what we need brand yes. our towns. I, I think that's a great idea. Okay. I think we, we've talked about it before. Yeah, we do so then. We looked so, at what Mesquite did on the on the corner of Trip and Beltline yeah. too. They did a pretty good job of their establishing their brand there as well. And we can do something similar to that coming on Trip into Sunnyvale. Or down Beltline as well. I think we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Either end of Beltline and then um, some more branding along Collins Road, but we're sort of limited now because whatever we do there may be temporary because they're going to widen that. But so, Paul, let me, let me ask a, a, a dumb question again. So, Beltline and True. Best kids spend a lot of money and they get iHeart yeah. comment from different people. Did, it's nice. Did that really impact their commercial base? I don't remember. No, honestly, it's, it doesn't. It's and sometimes in things like that, you've got to look at just a, it's a quality of life that doesn't necessarily have an ROI. It's just your beautification for what you and your citizens want to see the town look like and get a feel for. Um, it doesn't necessarily have an impact, especially that particular area. Now, I'm not saying that some towns in their gateway areas or their signages don't enhance that to where more businesses are coming around. But in our instance, we don't have those areas that would be enhanced necessarily for commercial development because of the sign. Yeah, I'm not against it. I'm just simply asking the question. Right? Sure. If you remember, is, if you remember too, how Trip Road, when it crossed Belline, there was a little two-lane blacktop, and they were really forced to go ahead and widen that thing. Yeah. So, and they had to redo the bridge at the same time. So right. they, and it's my understanding that their four B corporation paid for that. Mm -hmm. You don't. So, so the one needs to be able for it. And, that's, and in that's some really respects, you said quality of life. Yeah, so it's really a foreign project. Well. So they were sort of forced to have to spend some money on that anyway, and they just dolled it up pretty good, and it was, it was good. But it also helps. You know, people take visual cues subconsciously when they come into an area about what their experience will be. Absolutely. So when you go shopping, you notice what the signage looks like, whether there's greenery in the parking lot. You notice those things, you don't think about them. You formulate an opinion about what your experience will be before you're even in there. I think those sorts of things would help brand Sunnyvale. Because I've noticed Garland's done some of that as you enter their city, too. 
Is that is that something that you all would be okay with 4A spending money on? These in priority, like how y'all see your priorities, are these listed here in priority? So the priorities on this piece of paper no. are more for less controversial. You don't see these, like this is your top priority. Okay. Well, I, no. I'll, I'd say they're, these are like our top three near term goals that we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Putting right. one, we, short term goals, but not in we get order. incentives, right. incentives pop in our lap and we react to that. We've right. got to, and you can't plan that, oh, you don't yeah. know who's coming in. But in the meantime, we can be doing this and okay. it'd be great to do. I just want to get a feel for what yeah, you it, thought your top priorities were. These are like short term goals and long term goals, is how you see it. These are near term goals that we're, I mean, we've, we've got a hundred grand in the budget this year. That's what for signage. Asking, what's the, so you've already for, for, signage. for yeah. some signage, yes. Grand. And then I saw the estimated cost of those monuments, and we'll yeah. probably come back and say, can we use off that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> some intangibles from the <coughs> gateway of trip. No line because number one, we've only got to build one corner. That's going to be cheaper than a ski. Second of all, that's a floodplain corner, so it gives us the opportunity to get that out of the floodplain. And third, it probably gives us the opportunity to try to put in a right turn lane. Might as well improve the intersection while you're doing it. Don't put the gateway, don't put the uh, sign there, and then figure out, oh, we'll put a right turn. So there's probably not only some 4B, 4A money, sorry, 4A money, but there's probably some amenity money coming out of Homestead for that corner, that intersection. So, you know, nobody's going to build on that corner because of, nobody's going to build on the exact corner because of the floodplain. But we could take it out of the floodplain and enhance the intersection and perhaps get the right turn lane in there. It's um, off the several what are your thoughts on the industrial park? <coughs> Explain that beautification. Of just <coughs> well, trees. It's it's a big yeah. Well, just probably uh, in the median. You know, maybe maybe some signage, but more we were talking about like some type of bushes or flowers in the in the median and just kind of sprucing up that area because it is a gateway into from Mesquite into Sunnyvale and it just it just doesn't look good. And we had a well organized tour of the industrial park with the owners. And they recognize the fact, too, that when you drive up to that, it's kind of post-apocalyptic. It is. Post-apocalyptic. <laughs> I can't say the word. <laughs> it, it, it's a pretty rough-looking part of town. And they understand and they realize that some, you know, drive-up appeal is necessary to help, mm -hmm. you know, increase the number of, of tenants and owners that they have in that industrial park. We we spent what a million dollars roughly mm -hmm. to in well, half improve half a million for the water, water yeah to yeah. improve the water supply. Yeah. Every bit of it's underground. You, I mean, yeah. nothing about that project improved the appearance whatsoever. A minimum of you know some crepe myrtle trees and some nice signage uh, in front. I think would enhance it tremendously. There's a lot, lot of and traffic. And buy in from the ownership as well. Will they, will they match also, the, the industrial park? Will they help? help they'll help. help. I, yes. I don't know about match, but they'll help. Yes. They, they have some rather limited you know, uh, under, resources, under but, but, but they would help. Expansion, we're, yes, going to take out the monument that is down at Collins in the service road. And that's going to all be redone. Unless somebody hits it again. Unless yeah. somebody hits it again. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the, tar the target? Time to take it out. Yeah, well, that's uh, possibly in the time so if that could be moved to <coughs> Sain and, uh, and uh, Clay, Clay Mathis, yeah. you know, this side of the railroad track, that might allow you to, to maintain that, uh, that, or not have that expense if we can move that monument, because it's going to go away anyway, and, you know, somebody can hit it again. But to, and then build up some, some landscaping around it that's drought tolerant. Right. Be tremendous improvement. Can't kill an old crepe myrtle, can you? Sorry. <laughs> Can't kill a crepe myrtle. Well, apparently not. You can run over them, though. Okay. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and, and move on to uh, establish incentive, <coughs> excuse me, incentive guidelines. And one of the things that the board talked about at our last board meeting is that a lot of our projects are on a case-by-case -case basis. So you really can't have a strict policy um, because it depends on um, what, how many jobs are bringing in, you know, what the sales tax is, what the you know property taxes, et cetera. So that, but we want to come up with some type of a guideline, so at least we have a guideline to follow. And sense. Paul, you can elaborate well, on Well, we've got it in the executive, or the uh, strategic plan, there's some outline, general outlines of what we consider positives for, for handing those incentives out. I would also include unusual uses that are favorable to the town uh, and, and other things. So it is hard to quantify it, but we can certainly put a, little bit of a matrix. So you, want like, you want flexibility as well, hence the guideline. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. right. Because I, I think when you when you step into this area you can you can upset people pretty quickly if you don't have something to fall back on and say this is what we look for, you know, early on in the in the game to make sure that those incentives you're handing out are not don't appear um, bias. Oh, I don't know. Bias. I don't know. Oh, that's right. Sorry, out there somewhere. So that, I mean, we're probably instead of reinventing the wheel, I assume something. Some next time we speak at Fall. Yeah. Some, something, right? Is that something you guys will develop? Yes. So yep. is it for four A or is the expectation that the council at four A will share the same interests? Tracy. It's more for the, the so the economic development will have theirs, and they've already kind of got one in place. We just need to fine tune it a little bit to get a little more involved on the um, incentives based on what are we looking at what um, what areas of town are more important than others um, to kind of weigh different things a certain way um, are we focused more on the capital investment or are we focused more on the jobs and so those are the discussions that we're kind of having to figure out what our incentives based on will be um, like I said, we've already kind of got one in place, but we're just fine-tuning it a little bit. And yeah, absolutely not reinvent the wheel. There's several incentive guidelines and policies out there from all over the EDC. So um, just kind of seeing what what we want to do um, based on Sunny. Okay. So this is something you guys are doing with no expenses. Correct. Right. Sounds good. Okay, well, and then we'll move on to senior living in age-restricted communities. Now, when we talk about senior living, we're not talking about a nursing home. Um, what we're talking about is a, is a, is a senior living community, or uh, what was I'm trying to think of the right word that we use for that? Yeah. Lifestyle living. Um, I, I think that there's some residents of Sunnyvale that would like to m remain in Sunnyvale and may not be able to do that in their large home, and it would be nice if there was some type of a community to move into. Um, I think we talked about it being a disposable income. Um, you know, money that they would spend in Sunnyvale. It doesn't affect the school district because typically they're not going to have children. And so that's something that um, w it would be one of our priorities is to look at something like that. And, and Tracy's been approached, I think, by several different... So it's like it'll be within, you know, there's an area in Sunnyvale, right, comprehensive that allows that type of development. Are you talking about where it's already speculated that there, or are you talking about a different area? So that's where that we need changes to, Yeah, that's what we kind of need guidance. That's where we need input from council and what council wants to see. So one of the main reasons this got brought up is because we're seeing a lot of it come um, before staff. And we talk to people all the time wanting to build a senior living component in Sunnyville. Um, but what does that look like to council? Is that something that you even want? Um, there's a little denser requirements when it comes to age-restricted communities. Um, and I've kind of gone through here. There's obviously things, I put every definition you could possibly want in. You know, there's apartments, there's independent living, and these are kind of more the full-service community styles. You have the residential communities, you have um, senior living like the Del Webb communities in Georgetown. You've got assisted living, memory care, consulting care, retirement communities. So what does that, what does that look like here in Sunnyvale? How, how do y'all see it? What areas would y'all want to focus on? Um, can that include townhomes? Can it only be single family residential type and density levels? I mean, just kind of getting a feel for 
what y'all saw. Tracy, so watch the comments if I say right now. Yeah, that you. Because we put some thought into it, right, to get to that vision document. Not that we should always stay there. I know. We have, a, we have a starting point. I know currently it had said that it would just be. That's not about 12 priorities or something? Um, senior living area would provide an option for those who are aging to stay in Sunnyvale to prevent the senior living area from straining the school's district capacity. Town will work with the senior living developer and school district to adopt an ordinance to prevent residents from allowing grandchildren to use their address for school attendance purposes. The following are desired elements. A master plan community or HOA to ensure consistency in design. Residential lots of a quarter acre um, to maintain an open space field. Recreation amenities. Parks trails. Acres protected by an older. Easy access to medical facilities. Community maintained landscaping. Anti monotoning. Monotony. <laughs> whatever the word is. Standards. Minimal development size. 50 to 75 acres. Like a PD. And Probably will end up being like that. Be like a PD, right? like yeah. Plan development. And I would think that you guys need to have some flexibility because somebody may bring you an idea that's in zone for S whatever SF3 is now or something like that or well, some other I'll even throw something out there. That land on Beltline, just those gonna retailers are going to want that front space. I, I was going to mention, was we kicked around that, that concept yeah. at, at last month's meeting of allowing some of the commercial developers who have property in the back of their development that doesn't have frontage yeah. to maybe oh, use that to to develop some smaller uh, age restricted areas in the back of their property and maximize the use of that i know the the density issue kicks in there but again wouldn't impact schools wouldn't impact traffic and would allow them to use some of that property, and you have good tax-paying citizens back there so that, we, uh, that so would, that would never become multifamily or anything like that. It, it would be a, a nice use of the property. Yeah. However, you know, it, I think this is a topic we've all kind of bounced around in the so I won't speak for everybody here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think anybody's really opposed to senior living. The question is, I think it was either one of you two said, "What does it look like?" Yes. Mm -hmm. And one thing I don't think we can do. Is that I don't think we can pass an ordinance to serve us. You serve the state law, which allows the grandparent rule to be in our schools. So that's not to say that we're not going to have senior living, but I think we'd be remiss to say, oh, we're going to write an ordinance and say you can't have that. The state law says you can. So we need to we need to come to grips with that because that will impact the schools a little bit. Is it a lot? Yeah, who knows? And I think I don't know how old you guys are, but when you hit 50. I'm not looking at senior living yet. As a matter of fact, 55, I'm not looking at senior living. So in my mind, at 55, what does that look like? And I think that's where the flexibility is. I'm not ready to downgrade, so I'm thinking maybe 75 or 80. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I think that's when, when people, when, you know, we've met with a couple of developers individually to talk about that. And when I look at it, I'm like, hmm, that, that doesn't strike. So I don't think any of us have a really good plan for what that looks like. I'm okay with the flexibility, but... I think the one thing that strikes me individually, and I'm speaking for any of the other council, but what strikes me a little bit awkward is that we have a whole bunch of small homes that senior people can't take care of, and then in 10 years it looks like what you don't want it to look like when you built it. So but, that's that's my wraparound. I don't know how we protect that. So I know Robeson Ranch has somebody lives up there. Well, yeah, what I was going to mention is you know, you've got a variety of senior living facilities. So you start off at the very low level, government funded, mm -hmm. um, low income, and there's a bunch of those around here, but there's none in Sunnyvale, so there's, and they're all really nice facilities. I mean, if you go to one, you wouldn't realize it's low income, but the exterior is 100% taken care of by the facility. The seniors don't pay to take care of anything. And then you move up the spectrum, um, and on the farther end, and I have clients that live in them, mostly up north and out west, uh, the way that they're set up is an HOA type of arrangement. And so their HOA dues monthly are in the thousands of dollars. And then their home insurance insures the inside of the house. So it's a freestanding condominium. So if it gets hailed on, the neighborhood puts a new roof on it. If it needs paint, they paint it. They don't pluck a piece of grass in their yard. So these are usually very fluent people 
that want a quality house with quality amenities, and when they want to go take a cruise and be gone for four months, so they just lock their door and leave. So, see, these words sound good, but my question is, what does it look like on paper? And I don't Correct. I don't and so anybody that's got a good concept of what that looks so like. So that's where, you know, to me, I, just, I agree with you, you can't, I don't think you can, you know, paint that picture, but just be open to it when the developers come and want to present it, because most of these people don't want a quarter acre. Uh, and, at the, but, uh, and if you do, oh, yeah. then you'll go build your own house somewhere and still maintain it. Tell me, in my opinion, I'm just going to give, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think the, it is part of the vision. It's part of the comprehensive plan. We need okay. something, right? Okay. But detail, I agree with that. Yeah, we, detail is where it is. Yeah, we don't know what that I'll looks like. I'll talk to the staff, because we've got to be careful about it. But it's the, the EMS service, right? If it's old enough, not 55, may not be right. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is, not either, <laughs> I'm 54. I can talk about 54. <laughs> what, so, what, what so what would I want to talk about is to be, you want to be just mindful about speaking speak details. Because you're going to meet with council and PNs, you're going to meet with the big developer on this Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to commit to anything because you're not there yet. We just, right. in general, we are open to the idea. We just need to know what the plan they bring up fits. Our I, th I think I agree. I agree yeah. with that. I don't think it's, it's there. It's, that's the vision of my speaking for the council or my, my receiving the group. It's, it's only there. You know, I, having lived here as long as I have, a long time, uh, I, I pretty much laid the first time. The, the perception that we had when we moved here in 1979 was Sunnyvale was going to be a quality place. And that term covers it is a big umbrella when you talk about the level of living. And then we got into the law system. And then we began to realize that just saying quality of life, you, well, you then begin to become very sensitive to exclusionary tactics, which is what that lawsuit was about. <clears throat> it's very hard to put into words what this picture looks like because it's real easy to get right back into a scenario again that puts us where we lose that quality that Sharon and I thought Sunnyvale would be and I believe continues to be. It's going to take a lot of hard work and management effort to do it. So I don't think there is an answer or three answers. As Saji said, we're going to meet with developers in a couple of days. You know, that's Part of the reason why it's hard for us to zero in on this. But I think in today's world, particularly from an architectural perspective, when you look around Dallas and the surrounding cities and you see what's happening, and I'm not advocating necessarily for this, but if you look along any of the commuter lines uh, that DART has and you see what's being built there, I'm not saying that's what I want, but I'm seeing things there that can bring the quality of life or the type of social quality individuals to our city or to our town that we want it, that we want to have. That, that's why it's hard to it's why it's hard to hit the center of the dartboard I think is because there's there's how do we find it? It's just a difficult one to define. Okay. So tell me in general everything you guys have talked about is a great ideas, right? Just about it getting it done. Right. Short ten goals are great, you know, if you have longer ten goals, be thinking of the strategic planning also, right? right. It's all a short term yeah, well, we have one last topic, downtown development. that's undesirable. There might be some places that are better than others, but I don't know that there's any place that's reasonable that would be undesirable. i tell you one place that I think is great, just kind of parallel along with that, and that's already been brought up. The retailers want to face Belmont, yes. yeah, but the mean? lots are so deep. Yep. But particularly when you're talking about the southeast corner of Belmont, you're backing up to the Sandal property, New Hope, uh, the New Hope. That actually provides the barrier that we try to build into all these HOAs and or the uh, planned residential overlays. You know, we're we're talking a 60-foot dead area that can't be built on and all that. That's a natural one that already exists and will never go away. Unless somebody figures out a way to break the Samuel Doctrine, I call it the Samuel Doctrine. <laughs> but you know that's a perfect area because that kind of becomes a unique little island in and of itself behind the retail that would face Beltline and between the, uh, that that area between that and the farm. 
And I know there was a presentation that was brought forward about a year, year and a half ago that showed a street of some type in there, and I don't remember what happened. I don't think that particular plan came all the way to council, but it, I did see the initial layouts and thought processes of it, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, there's some things that we might can live with there. Okay, great. One more yes, um, if you turn the page over, our last bullet is downtown development. Ah. <laughs> Um, and we put this at the end because um, this is part of 4, 4B's vision as well as 4A. Um, we really don't know what the downtown development looks like, um, but we would like for that development to be around here. I mean, of course, where the bank is and where Derek's um, development is going in um, between like 80 and Trip on both sides of the road. Um, I'm going to let some of the other 4A members talk a little bit about um, their vision for downtown. Yeah, I think in the past, you know, Sunnyvale is a product of the melding of several small communities, and we never really got our identity as a downtown. I think New Hope once had a downtown and got torn up by a tornado on Beltline, but we we sort of envisioned like a small town square with a with the amenities that go with that, and of course that would require us to acquire property somewhere. And so we've kicked around some ideas, and we don't have any locked down one certain thing. But Derek's thing is going to, and the bank are going to further kick off, you know, kind of what our mindset is, too. So, so <clears throat> because we ran into some um, opposition in the last land acquisition that we did, we'd like to preface what we do with um, by saying we would. We, us and 4B, if I could speak for 4B, would love to come to the council and make a recommendation at some point to acquire some property, which is what we're going to need to do to, to, to come up with this downtown area footprint. Beyond that, or, or even if a developer came toward us and said, I would like to build downtown, you know, then we can embrace that and, and look at incentives there. But that's where we're going with it. And I think everybody in town would love to see a downtown Sunnyvale, some, some sort of another. So. Well, I'm just going to give my thoughts again. We got new council, old council, it's all new council part of It's not that anybody was against any other property. We had two property actors in right, one on southeast of Bellline and Mr. Collins, permanent property and the glacier track. And I think in both cases, perhaps, I think they have good buys, it turned out to be all good. I don't want to get an end game with it. That's probably the thing, right? You buy, and we sit there and try to figure out. So I think if you wrap that big plan first, and obviously we can't buy every property, right? So we've got to get that property owner's inputs into what they wish, what they, their desire, their goal, right? Combined with the vision of the 4B, 4A, and the council. At least for me, buying property is an option, but it just means I'm in game with it. We don't know how to get in there, we don't know how to get out. I think in this yes, case we would have an end game. Yeah. We would have a good idea about our end. Yeah, the southeast corner truly fell into our lap. I, I yeah, mean, that, sure, that was sure. not the ideal sure, sure, sure. plan. It, deal. It, it just fell into our lap. And, sure. it, you know, even though it wasn't as good a deal as we thought it was going to be, it still turned out to be a good deal. And, you know, it spurred growth and, and finally some sales across yeah. the street. That's. You know, I think it counts for anything. I, I, I love that idea. I, I love that idea of the downtown. I'd like to, there's still some debate on that roundabout, but I'd like to make it all part of a holistic vision, right? From 80, even to the roundabout, you look at some of the towns like I was in Raleigh yesterday, and you see that downtown that's connected to that piece. I think that's awesome. And I think it'd be a, a wonderful, if we could develop something like that addition to the town. That's just my two cents, but I, I love that idea. We, we talked about downtown Rockwall and how they've maintained their integrity there. And that would just be so cool to have awesome. Sunnyvale. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, we bounced those items around amongst ourselves. And <clears throat> I think that we're all agreeable with that. Probably everybody at this table is. My question is, we're going to keep talking about this until next year. We're going to do this and put a timeline yeah. on it so that it actually happens. And I, I, that's, that's really big for me is that we put timelines and make things happen versus sitting around talking about it. By the way, barbecue is good. But. He, he owns the property, controls the property. No, yeah, because sure. yeah, yeah, sure. we, yeah, we don't know what yeah, their plans are. Correct. I mean, ultimately, 
you and 4B, 4A, and 4B are asking y'all support and do you want to move forward with trying to make this happen? And if so, is it acquiring a property or trying to work with the developer and design something and let them acquire and we support the development? Maybe it's joint. Yeah. I'd say or both. Or a little or right. what, yeah, both. Go down both in paths. In the past, it's been kind of a three-way conversation. Right. I, like, mean, I think we agree. Well, do we agree? We agree. And then nobody does anything. So We're talking about long stretch, also, right? You know, so right. from the roundabout, what will be the roundabout to to eighty? So maybe it'll be you know different pieces. But yeah, I, I've there's been favorably different property forward. owners too, and you know we don't know what their vision is for their land. So right. But that's the pursuit that has to take place in conjunction with what that widening of Collins is going to look like, what it's going to do, and that and the impact of that. We have that vision now, kind of so we Start so we're, there, we're right? starting to get there, right. Right, right, right. but we're even talking what infrastructure is going to happen as well as 80, for example. We're talking about inter infrastructure changes. We didn't address it tonight about putting in sewer, but frankly, that's not top of mind right now until we see a little bit. Nobody's asking for it, and let's see what's coming in with 80, and that's our time to hopefully save some money and try to jump on that. Well, and I know it was short notice I sent you all an email, what, an hour before the meeting, but um, you brought up downtown Rowlett. Um, in 2005, they applied for grant. They paid the city of Rowlett invested 830 something thousand dollars and got three million three hundred fifty thousand dollars paid for infrastructure improvements downtown there to allow what's now going vertical to be there. But that was 12 years ago that they actually got started. Um, and I've got all the information on the different grant stuff and plan on going that during the four years. Now. But it's awesome. You know, there's yeah. lots of opportunities out there, but we have to work together, put together the plan, work with whoever the right person is on staff to do the grant applications because the money's out there to help us maximize the dollars that so we're accumulating that we can then multiply times four and get the work with the property owners, get the infrastructure in place so that then they can profit off of going vertical. It sounds like that's the general favorable field for me. I want to speak for everybody here. I am here looking at professional expressionists. So where do you go from here? Right? Is that something? Well, do you or a form we will start taking or you're asking? Okay. Do you, do you envision well, like retail with lofts on top or because then you're talking about apartments or are you just talking all retail or because in downtown Rowlett they do now have apartments or a high I guess not really a high rise. That's part of that, the detail plan, right? What that looks like. If you, if you go with this is what I'm going to do, then I'm going to force myself in your box, right? I think we will kind of open, open mind will be somebody with an expertise in developing downtown maybe. Uh, Tracy, you said, right, we can go spend $30,000, some number of dollars to go have a consultant. If you don't own the property, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know if you should go buy the property first, but then we are. What would our, what are, what yeah, what are our next if we story? bring you a presentation, a, a recommendation? Awesome. Maybe we we'll need to get it with 4B and have a joint meeting about that. I mean, our options are limited, so yeah, it's not rocket science, but it would have to be executive session material, so. Has council met with the property owner on any vision for looking at potential areas? Not that I know. We got a specifically the property behind us. Exactly. Is that the drawing still laying back over there that they presented at some point of what the downtown? You talking about Daniels here? Yeah. I don't know. They had ever come with that plan. I don't know, but again, I want to speak. I'm going to bring up Sean's name here, but Sean is not here. But I remember Sean talking. This is yes. a few years back, and Sean went back and talked to them about their plans. I don't know if they had a plan with that. And no. the last I remember from Sean's conversation with Sean, they didn't have a plan. That doesn't mean they don't have a plan now. Okay. But I, I think I think town council needs to meet with them for for A, for B. It's involved because if, if your plan or your idea or vision is not what the owners is. Dead. Good point. So I think yeah. the owners should be every property owner should be part of the discussion. Exactly. We can force it, right? Either you can buy it and you spend a lot of money at their bill, right? If they're part of the solution, perhaps we could have a you know, well, I think we want them to benefit also, right? What are we willing to incentivize as right. well? Right. Right. Exactly. Right. If mm -hmm. if at all. So we are a big player in this because we decide speculators. Exactly. If we decide we want to incentivize or do something different, then we can, I think, control the that destiny. 
our own piece of property. I think that gives us more leverage too. And I think it's why we should consider that as is some of that as well. We can, we can control that as well. And so I don't think we should be opposed or put us in a box. I'd, I'd love to see your thoughts and ideas on a presentation and see what that looks like. That's just fine. You, know, Eric, you mentioned something a while ago about grant writing, and that's one thing that I think we have lacking in our town yeah. in every area. Is we don't have a grant writer. As far as I know, I haven't seen any of that. When I was in Mesquite, in education, they hired a grant writer to go get the money. And we, we got millions of dollars sitting out there that we could get. And I don't know how we do that. It's a 4A, 4B council, a staff. But I'd like to see us all collectively find a way to get grant free money is what it is. It's free money, federal money uh, in our town that helps offset whatever we need. Nothing like free stuff, right? So mm -hmm. I'm all in favor of that. Right. One I don't know about the different uh, ways that it could. So staff has done some grants um, just on their own. There's also been the possibility of hiring a consultant, um, which we've looked at before um, as well to put the grant together. Um, we you know the Butterfly Gardens. We uh, applied for a grant. Um, we're fortunate that Miss Anthony is a phenomenal grant writer um, in her spare time. Um, <laughs> And so she was able to put together that. So we're kind of piecemeal what that looks like. Fed meaning. You didn't get that done. No, the scope of our project is smaller than they generally find. They are looking for like 800 acres. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Quite a bad decision. Quite spread together. The the some of the property that in question is has already been zoned, if you will, for some sort of a town center overlay. So the owners of themselves are are limited with respect to what they can do with that property under the under the covenants of the code. Again, if we incentivize the property, and again, we can bring a recommendation to you guys that may quote unquote get them off the off yeah. the fence. So. At the end of the day, you know, they are trying to be profitable, right? If the, Program which they benefit and we benefit, everyone benefits. It's a support. Come get to that funniest thing. So, can I ask a question for you? Yes. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, I like I think we're all passionate about yeah. downtown. I think so. I think that's uh, should be a priority yes. to get going. Yes. Get, get rolling. I agree. That, that's what I would ask Tracy. What's what's our next step to move okay. forward with that? So. Yes. Well, so I've got a question on that actually. Yeah. I actually heard several proposals as to what the next step is, and I'm not actually clear on what the next step is. So I heard meet with the property owner about the vision, 4A, 4B, meet to propose a vision to council, meet with a consultant to come up with a vision. And so I think this is where we actually get hung up a lot of times, is everybody has great ideas. And we don't come to an actual agreement on what the next step is. So if we all leave the table and we scatter, and then six months yeah, later, yeah. Uh, we're all confused as to what the next step is. So maybe we can actually agree on what the next step is. So for what was your thought? You said you um, want to get to and come with a plan. Is that a straw man type? I don't know. 4A, 4B meets, and yeah. we discuss and, and, and I would like plan. to add to that that 4A and 4B, 4A and 4B while we might have a vision, we may need, are we talking about consulting or getting a consultant involved in that yet. or just us coming up with our vision? I think we're looking at acquiring or, or, or establishing a footprint for a town, down, town, town square. And that footprint can be anywhere from 20 acres to 40 acres or whatever. I don't know how much we need But I guess our, if we have the experience in, to come up with an a, a actual vision and plan. Sure. Uh, Tracy? <laughs> I mean, personally, I would sit, so in talking with the people that, several of the owners that own the property in our downtown, we have a downtown overlay district, and, and in case you don't know where it is, it's this little pink area right here, and then Town Hall, pink. Trinity Bank, Derrick's property, um, this is considered working. our town center yeah. overlay district. So I've talked with a few property the, uh, owners speed. over here, um, and some of them do have visions on what they See want that. downtown like to look like or what their thoughts are. Um, so I think that if everybody's in agreement that that's what we need to do, then the next step would be getting together 
some people, whether that be the, all the property owners, some of 4A, some of 4B, um, staff definitely, and finding out what their vision is, and everybody kind of coming up with a plan for kind of seeing what the property owners are looking at or what their thoughts are. They mentioned yeah. any members, you know, because I'm all for incentives, and I know we got we got that going. But at the end of the day, we're talking about big pieces of very, very valuable property that those owners know how valuable it is. Small property there. So if it's priced out of our out of comfort level, comfort <laughs> level, or even just feasibility, do we want to waste a whole lot of time? You know, in other words, is this forty million dollars? Is this twenty-five million dollars? Is this because it very well could be a, a sizable number of reach. And we spend all our money on the property and we have nothing left to, to do well, anything with it. That's we don't have that purchase. Money. I mean, that's assuming it's a purchase. And I, for one, would be on the fence of, or on the side of the fence of saying, let somebody develop that. And let, I mean, I, I, Paul knows his stuff and I, I respect him for that. I'm a little bit over here of let's work with a developer to develop that and that let's see the interest first if there's interest to in going to the next step of then seeing what that might look like. But it doesn't, I guess what I'm saying, it doesn't have to be a purchase. No, it does. Okay. I don't think it does. But we're, we're talking about two, two, two paths, right? Purchasing it or maybe just working with the, the owners and seeing exactly. But, but they're asking for a vision. They're, yes. they're not asking for right. But right now it's just vision and, and, and those, the, the end game would be the same for both those, you know, what we kind of envision. Like, you know. I would think we might need to get the vision of the property owners. I, I, I think so. Yeah. So, I, Paul, I'm hoping that you guys get together with the 4B. You can right, a scan that you could, right? One of the steps you need to take, right, down to the details. Ms. Bradford points, when you come to the details, I'm pretty sure you're going to consult to that. You, know? right. you have enough time or resources and experience. But that's probably two or three steps down the road. I think initially it's the big picture, right? That's, that's what I'm thinking about. Yes. So 4A and 4B will get together and start talking. Yes. Do we want to set a, uh, timeline. a timeline next, yes, next Friday? Friday? <laughs> With the country coming up on the holidays. So we'll, we'll add the timeline within our strategic plan. Excellent. After this meeting, um, so hope the goal is that after this meeting we can finalize our strategic plan. It'll go back finalized in January to both boards, and then once both boards approve it, it'll come to council for final approval. Just to get y'all's buy-in and sign off on. Yes, move forward. January? So two months for the plan. Probably February to council. Well, it's a close enough. We're, we're, we're not reading. Why, why? That's the problem. Yeah, we just have one more meeting between yeah, the boards between now and the end of the year. And I would also like to propose that we work in some check-ins with council along the way so we don't spend six months to a year coming up with this beautiful plan that is nothing. What Sorry, again, my thought is any time you guys want to meet, I think we can either have to I, I think it's a high priority. I think maybe we, we push it faster. Push what? The strategic plan? Just no. meeting and talking about it. Well, we only have one, only have one meeting yeah. between now and the end of the year. I mean, I could add in another meeting. Well, come Well, I think the first step is just to find a time when 4A and 4B can get together and then all the other will kind of fall out from there. In December, I think, you think we could do that? I mean, we could do that in December. Do you want to meet in December? So, so I think we could probably. We can talk about it at our next meetings. Okay. I'll send y'all an email. Yeah, we could maybe have one in December. But, but, I, but I still think we need to engage all the property owners. I know we've only talked to a few because I don't know, I don't know what their vision is. And maybe their vision is the same as ours. I mean, I think there's a time for that. And we're not well, but is that not? Because we don't know what the so what property are, owners yeah. are already doing. So my thought is, because I've talked to some of them, I think that some of them are going down a path already, and I think that we need to figure out what that path is. I and think we're already taking steps that they're already taking, that we're just double dipping into what everybody's doing, as opposed to kind of figuring out and working together. So. What if your step doesn't jump with theirs? Sir? What if your step doesn't jump with theirs? Yeah, that's, see, that's what I'm afraid of. Well, no. we negotiate. 
Can we buy? Well, so anyway, so come back with that plan. Hopefully, December. Did you say you didn't say December? Well, we we each have another board meeting in November. Each board, but maybe we can do a joint meeting in December. We wouldn't have anything for council till next year, but maybe we can have another. Fair enough. That and that's why we put that at the end because we knew that that 4B wanted to talk about that as well. So, uh, just one more thing. So, with the expansion of Collins, uh, 4B has talked about the idea of these little poles going down the medians. Possibility. Have you heard of 4B now, or are you still on 4A? No, that's under beautification, which was on 4A. Okay. Kind of still parking with it. Well, it's the downtown development. It's part of the downtown the development. Ballot. Conversation yeah. on if we want our with the expansion of columns, we have the opportunity to be able to put some of these light poles, um, decorative light poles in the medians. So the the before it goes before it goes out to to, to bid, just figuring out what y'all would like to see, and then that way we can figure out because what Lyle needs is just kind of a design that y'all would like to see, and then we can figure out how many feet apart so that that can go into the process so it's been to my knowledge that this has not been um, discussed in the median as of yet but just being able because the idea came up in the median to make it look right like a downtown feel adding banners okay. to it during the holidays adding some so white just put the slides around the median and change the four lanes but it's a combination of you know working in with the master plan the branding so that when you enter from 80 that you have kind of the old town feel with whatever the style, style pole is that's yeah. picked, preferably to go <clears throat> all the way past the schools. Yeah. And then we wanted to finance um, uh, electrical to potentially every other one because they gave us a different price on if we could have uh, on the yeah for holiday decorations and mm -hmm. stuff that you could line up. So yeah. and, poles and themselves were one price, and then you had flags if you had electrical. Yeah, also in coordination with the schools. Do we have anybody on Encore that can help us out there? Right there. We, we've, ta we've talked about this some. So, um, on our, our decorative lighting, the, the, the tallest decorative lighting we have is 16 foot, so it depends on how high you want it to be. And then we won't allow electrical outlets. So, if you want anything lit up, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be on an Encore street light. So you don't it wouldn't be what? Power on your phone. Right. Right. Yeah. We don't allow outlets <laughs> on our facility. So our thought was every three or four or five, whatever it is, would be one that we would buy yeah. that would have that, however long that is. And when they're ready to talk about that plan, I'm here to help. Yeah, but I, figure I, I, out a way to do that. Does Uncle have a grant where we can get it? Can we say the media? No, unfortunately, we do not. Some are on the side, some are in the media. Councilor, any thoughts on decorative lighting? I like it. I like the center of the box. Any thoughts on that? I'm good with either one. Okay. Sounds like it's. Yes. I'm in, in favor of lights. Tracy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the concept. You got it, right? <laughs> 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 Thumbs up for elimination. Because, you know, that's going to have to, like she said, be included in the widening yeah. plan. Yeah. So. Let, let it come back to the plan. I want to take it. Pick the lights in the stadium. Put the bottles. It's more beautiful. What's the recent status on the widening plan? Time-wise. So, Charles, let's do our talk to you on the job. You can go ahead. 4B. Okay, so, uh, in order to be, I think we finished the land acquisitions, correct? Or maybe there's one more I don't. One more. Okay, so we are there. Meanwhile, staff is moving along. Let me, let me step back. They laid out a, a project schedule. I want to say 20, 20 August or May. April of 2020 for project yes. completion. So going to be the August, April of 2020. That's going to be the initial operating capital, the IOC. So if you walk backwards, the steps are that acquisition, they are basically done. Then they are in the process of utility relocation. In December, they are going to prepare a code to RFP to, RFP to send the request for quotes out. In January, I think, January, February, they are trying to get construction building, and that's the schedule with that. So I'm just going to give you a option. So August of 2020 should start. April 2020 is when it's going to be finished. We finish. August is going to be April. April, 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 April 2020. April of 2020. That's August. Will be done in April? That's the when, when will construction start? Sometime next spring. April 2019. 
Okay. Okay. And that's I don't know if we're in the way. We may not be. We may be falling. Um, so we're going to run about. I'm sorry, Asians. Isn't it around that same time that um, hey, Textot has agreed or whoever the powers of be to the South Collins the South Collins so, construction? Obviously, I misunderstood. I thought at some point of time, because I was led to believe that you are wrong, right? That Textot has finished acquisition of every property except my Anderson's property. So you walked into my Anderson and you got the papers that we were told on your green start here, we were waiting for that to be done. So now they are in the process of acquiring 20 or so properties. So it's not the schedule that it once was. I believe, I, I, I won't say, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll stay here for some say that in words. <laughs> I won't blame somebody to say that. No. My belief was the technology, yeah. I really so, about the signal lights. And... We got the funding, we got the yeah. design. So. Yes. The, the acquisition, then obviously everything is done. The material operations and the construction all this stuff. Okay. So we don't have a schedule for that yet. Is the four I going to hang around or four is done? I'm going to ask you to be honest. Yeah, it's up, it's up to the board what they want to do. Okay, great. I just want to, before I forget, appreciate everyone up here. This is a volunteer work. Thank you. You can spend a lot of time. You're passionate about the town. We appreciate it. If there are things council can do to support you, please let us know. The new member, James, we welcome you. Well, you guys are getting paid the same as we are, right? <laughs> 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 We'd be ashamed. The line is going to ask for 20% of payments, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to welcome them. Yeah, I also want to welcome Sarah Brown, Sarah Bradford, Torres, Ashley, and Jennifer. Thank you. 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 Okay. It's going to be on the all right, so it, I, I might need to close the 4A portion unless you all want to stay. I was going to stay, so I don't know what the rest of you want to do. Are you planning to leave? That's why you want to close it. I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, well, well, yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and, and if you want to be part of the discussion, you go and Well, yeah, we'll close the 4A portion of the meeting at 720. Okay. I may stay in this a little bit. You sure? Like, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to stay for the whole thing. I'm just going to, we'll see. All right. Yeah, I'm going to be closer to John Rockford. That's right. Right. Yes. Is that, is that what you want to do? Were we, yeah. were we not allowed to speak during that? Yeah. No, but we were. You are. Yeah. 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 You weren't supposed to speak. Thank you. Because now they still have a form. Yeah. Yeah. We're not voting. They can't. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, we still don't. Okay, look at see that. I was just going to listen for a little bit. I don't need to say anything. Even if you leave, we still appreciate you. Yeah. It's clean. Just. I'll shoot you down. All right, we'll go to the uh, 4B portion with our uh, top priorities. Number one, parks, long and short term vision. We'll move on to the first one, which is Vineyard Park. Lighting, overall field issues. <clears throat> well, we recently walked the Vineyard Park and we found out there's a lot of uh, issues with Vineyard Park still. Oh, so since Ryan's the money man, we'll just get the money from him. Uh, so some of the issues are the grading what, that we assume, as 4B, assumed was done on Vineyard Park. It was, actually it wasn't done properly. So the two fields that are out, well, basically the two fields that are there, that kind of slope into the middle of it, which means that half of each field is almost useless. Water sits on it. Water sits in the middle of it. So that's an issue. Quite a bit for that too. Uh, yeah, we did. We, we, oh, yeah. we, so we have consulted or the ground shift. This was their design. This was what the. Is there French train in there? When was this no. graded? This was a while back. This was a couple years. Couple years yeah. 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 A couple or. Uh, <laughs> I would say three to four. Uh, we hired somebody, yeah. but it was worked through. It was Michael Dowdy was involved. Sarissa was involved. Yeah, Mike, Michael Dowdy actually met us out there. Yeah. But that, that is a major issue. 
And so there is going to be some grading that's going fill dirt and grading. It'll have to, it'll have to be shut down basically. And resaw it in, seed it, and all that stuff. Yeah, probably. Right. Not the whole thing, but I mean, we're going to have Get to do some. Yes. Because right now they can only, the way it's situated, they, they're they're splitting the field. So my like, like I was saying, that that's still plan to do it, and you have the funding for that. What is what, what's the stage? We're letting town council know that that's going to be a project that's coming up very soon. Okay. And we that's new information. We, have, yeah, so we, we don't have, have, have prices. We haven't gotten any bids or anything. Yeah. Yeah. With lights. Okay. What's that? So now our lighting. This will be on top of our lighting right. plan as well. Exactly. Right. So yeah, just back up a little bit. So whenever we brought the lighting. Um, before council for approval and stuff, and the question became, do is that adequate lighting? Maybe we need some more poles, we need some more whatever. So we met with, and probably for those that don't know, and most of 4B does not, this is Burton Barr, he's our new parks director. Um, so he's come along to hear these conversations, and him, him and I have had extensive conversations <coughs> over the last few weeks. Um, so we went out to Vineyard Park, Burton and myself, Mr. Giordano, we met with Michael Dowdy, and we also had Park Electric out there um, and started going over the field. And that was when we really started looking at uh, the flooding that was going on in the field. So he's with Sarissa, and he handles the soccer portion um, that's kind of split on the field now. Um, and so he's been on those fields since the very beginning. So when he came out and he told us how they played, what they do, what they're looking at, how much of the fields can actually be utilized, because when it rains, maybe, I don't know, I would say about 70% of the field is usable. Um, the other 30% is in water and they can't really use it. So then you get into even further issues on, we don't have nets, we don't have anything out there. So when the soccer balls go over the trails, they're getting into poison ivy. And there's just all kinds of things that we weren't really aware of that were going on at the field. So now that we've had those conversations, we ended up talking about lights as well, believe it or not, but we found out a lot about the fields and how they need to be brought up to be able to play. Because right now they're playing, don't quote me on my directions, but they're playing east and west and there could be a potential that they play north and south and um, so that they're not playing all one direction the entire time running out the field. So that if they can turn, then we'll get better use out of the fields. And that's, can't happen right now based on the way the water is draining. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to move forward with potentially getting the lights. I'm still waiting. The guy, my contact from Clark Electric, he went out of town, so he's been out of town all last week, so he get back with me this week on the lights. What's going to happen with that is we need taller lights in order to make the fields adequately lit up. Our UDO right now states the tallest we can go up is 30 feet. In order to light the field, they said most lights for ball fields are 60 feet tall. Um, I've asked them what the possibility of meeting in the middle and maybe doing something at 45 feet, what that would look like or what that would cost. Um, the other idea was we are lighting that can be acceptable in the UDO and does not allow for, it allows for the light to go straight down as opposed to being able to go out a little bit. So if we can allow for lights that go out a little bit, that would also accommodate the height of the pole. We may not need it necessarily so high if we can get that light out a little bit further. Um, so those are things we're looking at where it will come back to you with another plan based on what Clark Electric comes back with on a bid. Um, we can move forward with the lights and have the lights further along, further closer to the trail line, which still see, um, meets the setback requirement that's required in the UDO. But as far, close as we can get to the trails, then we can still work on the fields at a later time whenever we can come together with those price quotes and everything else to get the fields out So Tracy, I know we have at least one of the neighbors send me an email, I'm gonna send every council member or not, in support of all the light. residents. All, those all the residents there are in support of lights on the field. So that is, the, that is one of the best things we've got going for that location is that all of them are very supportive of the lights going up there. Um, I, my, Color lights. Yes. Any lights, they don't care if it bleeds over, It's they're completely fine with it. And, um, I mean, They'll I be cut to, off by, you know, by 9, 9, 30. 9, 9, 8, 9 p.m. or something. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's not that they'll be on very late. We just need to be able to accommodate for our fields. And 
anything moving forward, any more ball fields or anything else we talk about, we're going to have to go higher than 30 feet. So we need to look at that in the video. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with Vineyard Park. Um, we'd like to move forward with the lighting. As soon as I get that, I'll bring that back. But then we're also um, working on quotes and stuff to be able to fix the fields and get those moving forward as well. So that'll be something that'll be brought back. I think this <clears throat> an important side note just from the community perspective or the resource perspective is that this is practice fields for a lot of kids. So it does not have to be, I mean, we want to do the best we possibly can for the kids, but they're not going to be playing games there. We're not hosting tournaments there. Uh, so this, what's the difference? The, the surface, you mean? The quality I, I, surface? I'm just, I guess my whole point there is just that it doesn't have to be a Mercedes. You know, we, so that, what is the difference in Mercedes versus what you want? Uh, my guess is going to be just expense. So it probably a oh, right. sure, completely sure. different kind yeah. of grass. Okay, the surface. The terrain, the, the yeah. surface, yeah. But it's not only inside the trail. That place is, it's, strangely, it's got a moat that goes around it. you got to cross to get into the field, and then it's got a lake in the middle. So if you go out there and you're not doused with deep, you're going to walk home covered in mosquito bites. So it's, it's the maintenance of the entire park area, not just what so we're we just doing in the past. The in the <laughs> that? Why don't we just pay for putting deep in the boats? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, you should. But, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, a lot needs to be done out there other than just the, the lights and then the interior. And Eric's right. We have talked about there, there's got to be a drainage plan along the exterior. So you have the trails the inside we talked about, but the exterior, all it does is drain off and then the water just sits right next to the fence line. On yeah, I think we have a drainage study coming up in six months. <laughs> and um, so it does. The kids are getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. Um, and the parents that choose to get out of their car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, based on what council voted this last time, I mean, we, we were willing to throw in more money because we felt like it needed more lives. I don't think, and again, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I don't think anybody from the discussions that were had that particular night, go for it, guys. So I, I don't think any of us are going to hold back and say, no, I, I think that's that's a good thing because it's something that, uh, it, you know, when you have the residents, with the, probably the number one thing that typically gets complained about when it comes to ball fields, <coughs> and they're going, we're not having a problem with it. I think it's a great place for, particularly since you've got the business community on the other side to the west, it's an excellent location. The only thing about that location is it's flat. And that's where the drainage issue comes in, and that's why you've got that drainage issue. And we just need to be careful when we go in and bring dirt in to do what we're trying to do there. Even though you've got uh, Lupton's property to the north, we just don't want to start forcing water to go to places that, with unintended consequences, that well, the advantage of this piece of property is there's three sewer drains that we can tap into. Drains. Mm -hmm. Which right. water drains? And they're on three corners. Good. And they're all, and they're all on the outside of that sidewalk. So that's, we can tap good. into that, have everything drained to those sewer drains. We won't have a water issue. Awesome. Awesome. And just from a budget perspective, we do we did build um, five thousand dollars in the budget for annual maintenance to cover that would probably help cover some of the weed spray issues and some some of those maybe some of them that is you that's know, for our parks i'm assuming or just that um, that specific park we actually allocated a certain amount for each park for general annual maintenance do you spend that much money roughly um we i would have to go back and look at last year's numbers um we actually took that number down Last year was the first year that we actually started allocating on a per park basis. But that amount is not going to cover the lights and it's not going to cover the grading and a lot of that heavy work. But I'm just saying that we can allocate some of the work that needs to be done into that annual so maintenance. Non recurring type of things. But right, there'll be some annual maintenance stuff and then there'll be, you know, the, um, the one time project yeah. stuff that we, and we have a separate budget for just parks. Well, so it, it'll all be covered under our existing budget, so but we'll just be bringing those projects to you for your approval. Sounds great. Okay. Any questions on the vineyard? All right, move on to the next one is Jobson Park. Currently has a baseball field and a trail. Jobson Park has been an you know ongoing of issue for a long time as we all know. So we're really 
I'm not sure with the situation where it sits with the school, and uh, I mean we're we're maintaining it as of right now. But other than that, we're not sure if uh, we're going to pursue anything other than what we already do. So if you could get it, let's say you could find the sky uh, that could become your property, what would be your vision for it? Well, we've already had a map of where we could add two more baseball fields. And uh, we had, yeah, we had a bid done a couple of years ago to actually repair the trail system because it's pretty messed up. But then we kind of got a total of 16 acres. And you would add a couple of ball fields and probably enhance the parking. I think we were looking at a little playground here. Yeah, as well. as well. But I mean, you from, know, a, from a soccer standpoint, it's barely used for soccer. There's a few people that go out there, but from a baseball standpoint, you could put in basically the same size that's there that would accommodate up to through, you know, what, fifth grade, I guess. From yeah, it would be, it would and be that's where smaller the kids. largest yeah. demand is right now. I have a feeling that with the new turf going in at the baseball stadium with the high school, the garden still, Coach Arden will still be generous and allow yeah, us to use that, but it's going to be, you know, just perspective real quick on Sarissa. I just got the basketball numbers. So when we started Sarissa five years, six years ago, we had 60, 80 basketball players. We just had 360 sign up for just basketball. That's K through six. What's the percentage split between Sunnyvale kids and kids from other Where it's, that's all? Sarissa's all 90-10. So it's 90% Sunnyvale, 10% other, but some, they don't have to do other. Right. Some do, but honestly, that's mainly football. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just wondering what's yeah, the it's all the, the it's in the bylaws. It's I'm, I'm glad it's 90-10 rather than 50-50. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm coaching several teams. It's all so You can bring this company. It depends on the sport, how what level of select it is. So basketball is open to everybody, and there's multiple levels from a kid that's never touched a basketball to top-notch kids for their age group and DFW versus baseball. Baseball is an exclusive organization and they kick people out. So if you're not in the top team, you don't play. You got to go play Mosquito you or play Mosquito or um, or because the Soccer is much more inclusive as well. So soccer has a group that decided to go select and they've gone outside of Sarissa. So Sarissa is now the inclusive group for soccer. That's good. So it just kind of depends on what the sport is, what each age group's experience is going to be as well. Yeah, so well, and it, it's good when you have enough kids to fill the nine, to fill that ninety percent, right. mm -hmm. and or enough kids that you can put together teams that are in the everyday, so to speak, and let those select teams go somewhere else, or they can be from Sunnyvale. Correct, but, correct, you know. correct. And then with baseball, baseball is involved, and that's where the, the younger kids is where there's the highest demand at present. Because as you, you know, I'm learning, as your kid gets a little bit older, for the most part, they're going to end up going select unless they're going to play in a municipal league. And right. that, then it depends on the coach within Sarissa which direction they want to go. So it there's, depends on the kids' skill so, as right. whether or not he's going to get to go. But there's not enough, there's not enough fields at all in Sunnyvale to meet the needs of those of that the average. Choose, average. Well, those that choose to play in Sarissa, right. yeah. there's not enough. So if, if uh, we could get Johnson Park, probably two baseball diamonds, to add two more baseball diamonds? Yeah. So you're going to run into the same thing. Are we going to be able to put lights up there? Yep. How much of that is going to have to be taken up by parking? And so, I mean, there's going to be things that come into play yeah. that'll need to be discussed if that opportunity were to ever present itself. Yeah, Austin never should come up. Oh, yeah. You have to be careful about how the light goes, right? The bleeding all. Lights would be less of an issue. There's a whole street right. in between the, 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 the baseball is primarily, the kids are pretty, having lighting is not as big an issue. For baseball as it's for soccer. Because we're a nighttime game. Right. So yeah, you know, it was light until 8 30 with it's baseball season. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. So Tracy has a solution guys there. The other was the restrooms. <laughs> the, there's no there's a part of the right now. Yeah. Or the media or the four jobs. 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 Yeah. 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 Is there plans aren't there plans to build a restroom in where? Vineyard too? Hey, where though? We've got it in our strategic plan. Vineyard. Vineyard and Jobson. For Jobson, would we want to build something? Yeah. 
Yeah. We've already checked the fire. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to the library if the library is open. The library too. The library doesn't like. Correct. Yeah. 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 You put an external. But if you clear the mud, you can never be more out. Outside. Take your cleats off and you can go inside. Outside. 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 Uh, this thing are right. expensive, but I don't know how you do it. Yeah. The bathroom is extremely so expensive. Yeah. 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 yeah, because they're doing porta potties and nobody. So it, from a budget standpoint, point. at one point we had well, some money set aside good. in our budget back when we were considering purchasing Jones and Clark. We had that rolling in our budget for like three or four years, and then we were pretty much told to forget that. So, so let's just take one at a time. Yes, we can. Do you think you have put out a restroom or not? Oh, restroom. Um, I don't, in my opinion, it's probably not. No. Okay. I mean, because we're looking at $100,000. Hundreds. Right? Um, yeah. It like 300, yeah. It's, 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 it's the one here. Extreme. Extreme. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's high. And that would have been on subject. I could have put two signals in the pocket. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Yeah. That's going to drive I mean, so, so the question then comes, are you willing, or are we willing to spend that kind of money yeah. for a temporary or lower class level park? Exactly. I think we just need to keep field. some bushes yeah. around, <laughs> not chop down all the bushes. There's poison ivy. They got two things in one stone. But really, you can buy one of those. All that trade. Now it's that movie. Yeah. <laughs> not use that one. What is the idea? We would have Would the town the allow places? that? Could we add on to the outside? Of We're using porta potties. Oh, I know you are. Right. Come on. There's a gold yeah. monster here. Yeah. There yeah. is a little girl's complaint. Especially if you have three guys. I don't believe it is a good thing. I mean, four balls is the only case. Yeah, and one of the boys is just three. Yeah, I agree with your sanity. You know what? You're sanity. Oh, I did. You're sanity. The boys, if they need to, they can. That's yeah, there's a poison eye. I think you got a point in your little head. That's why they want the lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, so I think what I'm hearing is if Jobson Bob comes along, let's just keep it that way. Will you have a plan? Do you think there will be a plan from Fort Lee to go do something about it? Uh, we could, yes. But, I mean, Jobson's just been kind of lowered on our. Fair enough. We don't have it, so that's not yeah, a plan. Like, why waste time yeah. on it? Until uh, we know. Okay. So. Anything else you want to talk about that? No. Okay. Next step. All right. Town Center Park, okay. pavilions, tennis, <laughs> basketball courts, trails, exercise machines, playground, and covered benches. Yeah. Uh, we were looking at actually redoing, well, we redid the basketball courts. Didn't we finish the covering on that? Or? The striping just got done. The tennis courts just got resurfaced and they even finished. It finished so. today. Tennis courts have been finished today. They also have pickleball out there now if you want to play pickleball. Um, and What's the pickleball? Pickle, pickleball takes up like half. You can split like a tennis court, just split it in half, and play this game called pickleball. It looks like a, kind of a racket. It's mostly seniors, so it'll really appeal to uh, the seniors. So there you go. It's not. It is not, it is not seniors. So can you put that extra 55 your age? I met with somebody in, in Forney about two months ago. And pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the U.S. right now. It has nothing to do with age. They're having kids yeah. six years on up playing this. The kids are asking uh, actually put one in at the school that can use during recess. Yeah. Wow. And they're, I mean, it's, it's growing. And you can use a tennis court to do the same thing. Like that. So, anyway, that's... So you hear what you're trying to say, Scott? It's just items, just updating that, we just updated the clock, is that? Good? Yes. Um, it's more about? We had talked about, you know, looking at expanding the bathroom as well, but there's the cost again. Okay. Because um, there's, we've had com some complaints about the bathroom situation there. Yeah. I'm sure you probably have as Especially well. Especially when Sunny Fest or we have any events that go on down there, I mean, there's only one stall in the women's restroom. So, I mean, you have, okay, well, I didn't know about the men's, but I know there is only one stall of the women's, and so it becomes an issue. And um, so we've talked about putting- You don't get much for $100,000. Yeah. 
No, the last quote we got to kind of do the same thing was 100, 150,000, but all that goes back to, I mean, it's because we require the stone on there. Um, it adds a little bit more cost to the restrooms. So well, let's pull out Sunnyfest, and I'm not saying what this potential answer would be would be wrong, but if you pull out Sunnyfest, are we getting a lot of complaints from citizens that there is only one stall in either one of the bathrooms? Because <coughs> Sunnyfest is rectified by bringing in port bottles. Right. So, you know, for that one event a year, I don't want to have to spend three hundred thousand dollars if a hundred thousand dollars is what it takes, because it'll end up being three. Uh, are we getting a lot of complaints? I, I, I've never heard of any during normal three hundred sixty-five or three hundred sixty-four. If we want to say that Sunnyfest is one of those days, are we getting a lot of complaints that the single hole on both sides is a problem? So the only ones I've heard of are when something happens and it's a weekend and um, kids decide they're going to go shove some mulch in something or flush in the pots out of commission. Which is vandalism, and, which is a totally different thing than needing to go to the bathroom. Right, yeah. but it, it boils down that we have only one bathroom for somebody to go into and if it, something happens, whether it be not and vandalism mulch, and just something happens, yeah. then we the mulch both of them. don't have a restroom. Um, so it's... Yeah, I'd rather spend the money, if we were going to spend money on restrooms, in one of the other parts. Makes sense to me. Just thoughts. What is exercise what? machines? I mean, I know what they are. You know what they are? I know what they are. I heard about it. 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 Town Center Park and Samuel. Horn. Yeah, across the street from him. Those stations, they're like every... 15 feet where they have them. And there's Resistance arm things, and there's sit-up station, bench press, press squat yeah, stuff. You better drive yeah. play. You better drive this yeah. And they guess what they were. They get used <laughs> pretty frequently at yeah. yeah. times a day. So. Have they held up well over the time yeah. that they've been there? They're actually yeah. all yeah. really good. Time. And they've been in there, what, 15 years? No. Oh, no. Longer than no. I've lived in Sunny Bill. Yeah. 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 How well it held up to the vandalism, to the people using it, to the weather, the elements. They look good. It looks almost new, really. It's, that, that's cool. And that's the one thing I want to be sure before I invest a whole lot more money as to how well they're holding up. I don't think like we're talking about adding any new ones. No, it's just no. It's not. So regarding uh, the path that goes back into the woods, um, is there any are there any plans to uh, you know cut back some of the foliage? And or put like call centers or anything. I think uh, um, I've heard about some public Evans was talking about those. maybe trying to do some some. We call brought boxes. it up, but we haven't yet had our call boxes meeting yet with the new like parks manager. But you know, one of the things we've talked about multiple times is raising the canopy because you get near the woods and it's you know you can't you don't know what's three feet yeah. past you in the woods. Right. You know? it just needs to so be pushed go, back. Right. Well, you need to so clear the open and raise the canopy. Get the whole back. Not two months ago. What's that? The DSO chased a guy into the woods over there. Not too long. Oh, really? It was about two months ago. Helicopters yeah. flying. You know, they thought it was oh, somebody who was camping out in there. So, yeah, raising that umbrella would, would maybe help. The other thing to think yeah. about back in there is that, from a law enforcement standpoint, if somebody were to encounter something back there, there's no way to identify where you are. So, there may be something to think about. Markers. Like, marker, or, like this yeah. is J2. Place three or something like that. We had talked about it. I, Whatever. I agree. Um, so eventually, way back moved, in there in the woods. when we moved to the trail pond. system, pond, yeah. we planned on putting in mile markers and stuff. But you could do that. It's on the map, but when we talked about doing it on the ground, it became hard because it depends on yeah, which way you're going. Would you do this? Yeah, because you know, yeah, yeah, it's. And if people can do it on their phone. I just asked specifically but, heard it from the sheriff. That but correct, I agree with you. We had we were thinking, I was thinking about it as measurements as opposed to just some marker. Location. Or some, some generic yeah. marker that you can then correct. get measured. When you say Johnson yeah. Park, which Johnson Park? Or, I mean, where are we? Town Center, right. right. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. So that's Honestly, I think, uh, I, like I, I think the call boxes are a great idea. But in our concrete jungle that we live in, going back there is really nice to actually get away from stuff. So having call boxes very close so that people can, and that are labeled, so people can know at least where they're at. Uh, but raising the canopy and 
cutting back too far, you, you're going to end up with what you have in the open field, basically. So. There needs to be a balance. No, no, I'm saying like five feet. Right, right, like five, five, five feet, ten feet, like five feet. Mm -hmm. Just to cut some more. Uh -huh. So you can't jump out. The underbrush. Take out the underbrush. Right. right so even yeah, like yeah. even in the open area where you go and there's a barbecue pit on the west side, nobody's going to go over there and use that. The trees are all the way over on the edge of the. Right, it's touching. It's like touching it's the like table. Yeah. By the streets, there's a nice picnic table and a barbecue, but the grass is five feet high to get to it. I mean, it's just like that kind of, there's no path to, I mean, it's a great idea, mm -hmm. but you talk about functionality, I think it's uh, way outside of myself here, so I'm talking. Is the new member of our town staff taking notes? Yes, diligently. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. He's got a whole notes. I'm sure he Almost three pages. <laughs> uh, I haven't even met him yet. I know, right? <laughs> That's one arm I think you need. This will be your minutes. He's got some job in the next year. Right there. I do like All the new right. lights and the LED Moving light. It makes a big difference yeah. out there. So you make a decision on these? Any other? The conversion to LEDs Sounds out there is a lot brighter. So, so Michael, are you asking for a decision or what are you looking for? The sound was five dollars. It's more of an update. No, no, town center. Town center? Yeah. Okay. I think we're on. Oh, okay. It's a town center. Okay. Yeah. And we also uh, updated the surveillance That's right. out there at town center. Which, yeah, we had to replace a bunch. So, so wouldn't the biggest need be out there some more little buildings? Well, I was going to just say that, yeah. We were looking at maybe installing some more smaller buildings with the benches underneath there, covered buildings to add. Because um, some of them, you know, depends on the weekend, but some of them are all used. And then if you have the well, larger big pavilion. Taken. Yeah, it usually is. Yeah, and there's not many small ones for other families to use. Yeah, you could add some more of those. I mean, they probably hundred thousand too. That shouldn't actually be much. Probably twenty grand. Everything's either thirty thousand or hundred thousand. <laughs> so one thing. Is it possible to run the water more? Because this gets pretty stagnant. It seems like. Uh, yeah, we, is there a fountain or something that we can we, run there? There is a fountain that are you talking about in the pond? Uh -huh. Well, there's there two things. It. There's the fountain and then there's the waterfall. You can turn on the lake to where the two lakes circulate, but then for whatever reason, it's maybe our new parks building couldn't explain it to us. But our old parks guy said, that I just run it once a year when there's people out there for the sunny fest and we don't run it any other time. Never made sense to right. me. I mean, just, and then you I, had the fountain. Where are you going down? Got, got plugged up. <laughs> with, now I know it costs electricity to run it because it's like running a large swimming pool because it pumps up. Time time. Right. So we used to run and it then starting the at like that four got all until up fishing line and then they had yeah, to replace like it. That maybe oh, yeah. We used to run it from like four p.m. to eight or nine p.m. Mm -hmm. Right. Makes sense. Used to. I don't know what we currently do. At one time, we were running it from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Don't, don't get me to testify. Yeah, yeah. 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 we just broke and we just got replaced. Both the motors and the fountain had to be replaced. We used to stock the thing with fish and everything. Yeah. We did not too long ago. Stock it. Yeah, it's pretty overgrown. Would they survive? And the lily pads get taken care of. and. Oh, we did. Yeah, they, they spray grow. those and to get rid of them. Well, judging from the ponds on the trip right now, that pond down there, which I haven't been to, it should be pretty full of water. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. The other is a trip, pretty full. Mm -hmm. Well, one question that comes up sometimes on um, surveys is splash pad mark. Oh. And so I thought I would just throw that out there because. So like, what is so? Tell me what that is. So like a. Um, <clears throat> the horny's so, gone right now. The so water the thing shoots up the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's actually like soft surface of water. Space about as big as these tables oh, yeah, that yeah. shoots up the water, yeah. and it would be like on some type of recycled water yeah. thing. We actually were considering it a few years ago. Then we had like this major drought and water restrictions and blah blah blah. It's not something we have recently talked about, but since we're talking about Town Center Park, I just thought I would just. Toss it out there. You can so the water. So you well, it's coordinated. There's coordinated. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> Use the pump horn. You could. Or the or the second second second. Just turn the pump on. Just get going. <laughs> Sorry. It's getting later. <laughs> so that's been an item that has come up on surveys because of the population of the young children in our town. It seems to keep coming up. However, it has not been of interest. So it's not, it's like this one that you were really considered that? Or what, what we, you we did consider it at yeah. one point. We didn't get very far in the process. Are and you it was planning to bring that back it. for consideration? I'm yes. just mentioning it now because we've talked about it before. And I just capacity to add more stuff. Because every time I'm at that park, I mean, it is packed. Well, I guess that a qu the question I would have there is what about all the green space on the front side? Is that off limits? Well, that's where we were looking at the splash pad because now what we do now, like with Sunny Fest, we don't generally park all the cars there. We used to, but no longer. Now we just show them from the, from the school. Well, and I so wouldn't even, I would, I'm not even thinking Sunny Fest. I'm thinking yeah, just general Saturdays. Saturday to go to the park. Yeah, I'm good about it. Area. So, you know, I mean, it's, I like the idea of a splash Park, but you know we've got a lot of other things on the agenda including mm -hmm. all fields and sports complex and if you go to Allen Allen has a major sports complex in the middle of it where the kind of the central hub they've got a splash pad that's bigger than this room and it's really good because if you're taking kid a and you're out there all day long for baseball and you got the other kid the other kids happy because they get to go play in the splash pad and give you some you know so um, so where do they put their food concession? Not that I'm against it, but where do they, they put have food them? They have them, you know. I mean, but so it's, you got to walk to the outfield to get food. Type no, because no. they've got them spread the out center. in different facilities. Because they have soccer in one area, they have baseball in another area. And they have <coughs> a central hub near the yeah. parking where the splash pad thing. Yeah, goes. what I was thinking, my business was saying is they put the splash pad in the center, in the center yeah. which is usually where I see the concession. Yeah, but this this place is. Hundreds of acres large, yeah, so it's when I say yeah, above, it's yeah, it's yeah. 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 I like the idea of a splash pad at some point. I think that that's a good idea. I think there's not that I have a priority, yeah. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's good not a high priority. I just thought mm -hmm. I would just gauge the temperature since it comes up sometimes, right? So. Kids love them, families love them. I think Betty could just Betty could have a splash pad in his pocket. I might be that big. <laughs> there will be water feature at this property and that turfed area will have uh, ability to have water sprinklers you know that are moved in but there's a fountain as well uh, but not necessarily a splash pad <laughs> well, we'll just put a sign at the park and tell them to get in your place yeah. use the restrooms right? <laughs> use the restrooms and go play at the fountain if they buy a meal and a coffee they can use our restrooms any other questions on the uh, town center park? <coughs> <coughs> One thing on the splash pad thing. Uh, five years ago, when before the draft was, I thought it was one of the highest items on our list uh, based on feedback. But I think we convinced everybody because of the drought that maybe it's we couldn't do it. So I think there's a lot of interest. But people like myself that have the toddlers, we go, we've been to so many splash pads around the. I guess what I'm hearing is if that comes higher in your priority and the money works out, it's just something, consider it. It's just yeah. something, to, it's something that I think can stay on the list, or we wanted to know if it can stay on the list, because at one point sure. it was sort of needing to fall off. So, okay. All right, we'll move on to Samuel Farm North, which currently has a walking trail and exercise equipment. Uh, we do have a, a couple ideas with, with this. We don't want to spend a lot of money since it's not our property. So we have looked at uh, disc golf in, uh, in that area and uh, also possible with the butterfly garden connection on there. Um, presently we don't mow it at certain times of the year so no weeds. Does its thing and uh, is a butterfly garden still in consideration of that? Will say the kind of elevator cost of the funding. It's still consideration. 
it is, is although we had talked more about um, New Hope as yeah. a better location because it is in our ETJ. Am I saying this right? Here? It's in our, uh, in our town line. Where but it's so, uh, Salmon Farm. Well, he doesn't know that we're fixing to perhaps receive some of the money for a nature center that we don't know much about. We just know we're going to get it. And it's called a nature center, and we know where it's going to be. And uh, I think that would be a possibility for, I don't know anything about butterfly gardens. Mark, I don't know anything about nature centers. <laughs> they might go together. I mean, don't get money. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's $45,000 might put in a pretty nice uh, and that would be in Sunnyvale? Um, sorry. That is in Sunnyvale. That's, that's in Stonyvale and uh, Town East. That's so in the floodplain of the new Stony Creek 3A or 3B, whatever. Yeah, exactly. All we know is we're going to get $45,000 for a nature center. Okay, yeah, but, but it doesn't have to be there, or is it? I remember you, know, you guys I, I covered this last right. Monday. It doesn't okay. have to be there, but. No, is that, when you say nature center, is that that building? We don't really do so, <laughs> so I can get to the point, right? So, we have actually, I have to go back and reread, but I don't So if this agreement was made, somebody speculated that there will be a nature center or $45,000. And that's it. So what that meant, it was designated as track three. So yeah. that kind of says it was meant to be in that particular area. Which would actually like, be a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just yeah, don't know. So no, we don't know what that means right now. So we end up getting the money, because we don't know. We can't define this well, we're talking about time. having butterfly gardens in different areas of the town. We're not yeah. limited to one right. particular area. From our priority right. list, we decided to take it off the table for tonight's consideration okay. because we don't really have a. Great. I, that's that's, that's what I'm trying to get. By no means am I saying that's where it ought to be. I'm just saying yeah, I'm really that we, we've got something <laughs> coming along that we don't really know where it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. If you get to with, the, um, with the, uh, the Tracy or maybe with the, or shop, okay. you can give me more details yes. about it. Where are I don't. It's evil from there. It's just north here. Yeah, yeah. So really on Sam and North, that's all we really are kind of inter interested in uh, with, with that area, simply because it's not our park and we don't want to you know, invest a lot of money into something that, you know, I mean, our contract's not even been finished. Yeah, can we, what's our the reason? Can you give us details on this contract and what, what's our... It, well, it, it's supposed to be a 50-year, I believe. What's that? The new, the new contract with uh, the city of Dallas. So the new contract that we're working on kind of been... I haven't figured out whether going forward the new contract is beneficial to us or not. Uh, right now, what it looks like, it's not. And that's simply... And the board doesn't know this yet. Um, the... Right now, our current agreement is up in 35 years. Um, we, at any point in time, Dallas can give us six months notice and the lease can be taken away from us. So we were looking at the possibility of changing that to a new lease term um, because they can take the lease away without any cause or any reason. So the thought was if we went back and did it for cause and had a longer period of time. With that, the way our contract currently stands is we have an automatic renewal period after 10 years. They no longer do automatic renewal periods. So then we would have to look at the fact of at the end of year 10, would they consider renewing our contract again? So. Right now, I don't know if the benefit of redoing the contract is any different than what we have right now. Because they're not going to just take the lease away from us. They don't really have a... No. And they don't want to take care of it or anything. So... But they won't do anything longer than a 10-year term on a new lease agreement. Right now, we have a 35 years left. Did, yeah. 35 to 50. But they can take it at any time for call. With right? no call. So really, it's just a risk. But, but the, we know the trust says they can't do anything it with is. it other than be a part. But honestly, if we're not going to do anything with it, then do we really care what the lease says? Yes. So that's I guess that's the question. Do we spend? I mean, you've got all this land that's just uh, there. Well, the right. idea about this call was to bring people to the area 
But at the time when we started to with this fall, we didn't have anything to bring them to. Well, now that we're starting with the retail and the economic development, if you build it, they will come, you know, mentality. So now we might actually have some working with people to eat when they come play disc golf. So I think we're wanting to start talking about that again, especially if the butterfly gardens are better suited for new hope or other locations and floodplains. How much money have you talking, Sarah? We, the original quote we got was around 30 grand. But, which isn't much, however, there was an additional issue with no bathrooms, and we also were looking at the fact that there was no charging. Now, I think we went back and, um, because we wouldn't want to pay the money to pay the parking lot on land we don't own, and there was some discussion about gravel and other things, so we didn't finish those discussions because we, realized that we were maybe a little too ahead of our time <coughs> on that project and we didn't get a lot of good, it just wasn't a good time. So, if there's interest, I mean, if you think it might be a good use of money to get people to spend money in Sunnyvale, since we're heading you know, down that way, so we still might be a little early, uh, but, on the, you know. On the, uh, this golf thing, when we were actually looking at it several years back, the, the tree issue that we had, the tree ordinance issue that we had, was going that to was be a problem that. at the time. That's, that, been, changed. that's been changed. So uh, we don't have that major issue. What's the issue again? Well, it was trimming and cutting trees. And, uh, cedar, to be specific. The cedar tree. Now, can, can we can we cut them? Now we can mm -hmm. Yeah, can can we cut the, 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 the trees to make a kind of cedar protection side? Well, cedars aren't protected anymore. Well, how about we had two different we had two different groups come in that put on tournaments, this tournaments, and were willing to volunteer their time of helping us. Flat this out and trim those trees if they're in the way or need to be trimmed up or whatever. So, I mean, we had some free assistance, you know, that we were looking at. So I it wasn't it wasn't going to be a money making opportunity for us because we can't make money on that land anyway. Right. So it was really just a way to bring people to town to use, you know, to spend their tax dollars here. But we didn't have anything at the time for them to spend their tax dollars on. Were you talking about coming off of 80 and yeah. the back part of yeah. the airplane thing used to be yeah. right there? Yeah. And really, guys, having worked for the Dallas Fire Department for five years, way back eons ago, and having read through the agreement over the years and what small connection I've had to it with that land and what Dr. Samuel's intent was, why he wrote the document the way he wrote it, and City of Dallas, and Charles can probably fill in on some of this um, too because he was with the City of Dallas for a few years. What are they ever going to do with it? Nothing. So the risk, while I totally agree with your assessment of the risk, they're never going to come get it. Well, I just I mean, can't see yeah. where they're ever yeah. going to come get it. We made comments of that as well. Yeah. You know, but, you know, again, we were looking at it, it's like, okay. Is town council going to say, yeah, go ahead and put and put 60 grand out there? I'm ready. You know, I mean, we're like, well, maybe they're not willing to go 60, you know, or whatever it may be. Yeah, I you know. know. You know, I, I see it from an economic development perspective. But if 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 we can build a bunch of pickle courts out there or frisbee golf or whatever, I'm I'm really to, I'm willing to accept that marginal risk that I really yeah. think exists. Location-wise, strangely enough, location-wise, it would be the prime place for a sports complex. Mm -hmm. But the issue that always came up before was that it fell under Mesquite PD, right? Yeah. 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 So if you invested that level of money and then Mesquite wanted it, but it, in some ways you're like, so what, then you maintain it from here on out. Well, and there was a, some discussion a couple of years ago I don't know how valid it was, is maybe doing some swamping of Mesquite ETJ for Sunnyvale ETJ, particularly speaking about the far south end of Lawson Road and 
out there by the railroad tracks where sign comes in and then oh, yeah. flip flop and stuff like that. Which I don't know if that was a valid plan or not. If it if it was a valid plan, I think we ought to investigate it and see if we could get Samuel into our ETJ. You know, the one thought that I did have with the town manager of several years ago, Scott, and he and I discussed back and forth. We didn't see the chance of this happening very very much, but we just felt better getting the Samuel property under RETJ because what if something did happen that broke the trust and now that land becomes available and the next thing you know, Mesquite's got high-rise apartments going in on the property. So I think it's important that if there's, if, if what I was being told a year and a half or two years ago is true about being able to do some flipping, it better protects and lessens our even lessens our risk even more. I don't know that I'd want to spend sixty thousand dollars on building the earth, not sixty six hundred thousand dollars on building the complex there, because there is always an assumption of that risk. I, we're never going to fight it, but there's other groups around town because Dr. Samuel left a lot of pieces of land all around everywhere, and there are people fighting that all the time. The city of Dallas is, I think, Charles, you can fill in on this. The city of Dallas doesn't want it, and they've been trying to figure out how to do it from the stuff that I've been coming across. That's true. Well, so we had, we had a, uh, Polly Hunter, her husband, mm -hmm. worked for the city of Dallas mm -hmm. and, in the Parks area, and, and she has made comments in the past that the comments that he's heard is that Dallas doesn't want any of them. When I worked there in the 70s, all. I worked for the Dallas Park Department from 71 to 76, and it was a sore on our back then. But so, Tom, it didn't but cost our money to be I don't, I don't really see doing anything uh, because that, that, that risk is there. That they could, the city of Dallas does not want it they don't under want any it. circumstances. But so they're not going to put up in the mesquite ETJ, and that's like rolling the dice. That's a bigger risk, right? How big of a deal is to? I, mean, I, I don't even know what's the process for switching. Yeah, I mean, Mark was saying, I don't know what the discussion, I'm sure it happened. The last conversations that were had, that is not possible. What, they won't give these? To not swap. And it's possible that if it gets brought up again, they will annex it into the ETJ. Mm -hmm. so, so, how about other uses, like inexpensive like bike well, trails? Because we've talked about that. And dirt bike trails, came to our like meetings that. And just ask, yeah, can you mow nature paths through there, you know, and so yeah, if you do that and we mow it on a two week or three week basis and keep just a nature trail through there, that that's what right. cost. Off off the off the uh, you know, the official And you could do that in conjunction with asphalt. Frisbee so golf. We could or do not. asphalt. That was one of the questions I wanted to clarify from the council. Is there any way we could put it's the, the parking right now where the planes used to be or whatever is gravel, right? So we thought of, okay, if we're going to put this disc golf, we need to make it uh, concrete. I think it was the only option we had. But so that we don't make such a uh, large expenditure that we put off right. this I don't know what... This is for you, Mesquite. Here's some gravel. Come and take it. Yeah. It seems like asphalt or the recycled... Stuff you can buy pretty cheap that you can make driveways out of. Yeah, but I think there's our EDO does not allow for that type of parking. So it would be a variance if that's why he's asking. Right, so we could do the variance, right? So that's not even in our It's not even in our council. So all we're doing is taking some property or somebody else's ETJ and putting on the travel as he wants. So we. Because I think our concern was gravel would not be desirable for people to park on, yeah, but, and asphalt would be a cheaper option asphalt than concrete. Or road milling or something like that. Okay. So, so it sounds like we can keep living. this on the list as I, I, I a fairly take an inexpensive option and a good use of the well, property. Something that doesn't require yeah. building. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something that doesn't require a expensive amount of dollars right. to maintain. So we don't get uh, mesquites. No. No. no, no. But it would, it would just allow allow people to use. There's so much land there. There's so, you know so much forest. It's the perfect. Um, well, they actually came out and they did a. Was that not twenty years ago? Many years ago. Yeah. 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 
trip was? But no, the Salmon Farm North was in our ETJ a long time ago. Really? Being you that way? Sir? We gave that away? Mm-hmm. What for? We trade? <laughs> we we get charged. So what do we get? Washing machine? Receives me wherever you want. I don't remember it being in the I don't remember. I remember walking it when the cedars were about that tall because the landscape architect wanted to go out where all the cedars were. <laughs> so the, the parking was one of the, the cost, and the other one, obviously, the restroom. So if we were to have a lot of amenities, you're going to want a restroom, and that costs money. So, yeah, but we got to start think, somewhere. Uh, yeah, I don't think restrooms. Well, I just want to say, sixty thousand dollars is nothing to the potential retail side of it. Once we get more of this retail going, I think I, I think we get a payback. We go to ball diamonds everywhere. We're parking on gravel. We're parking on. Yeah, right I mean, we um, were at baseball nation south last night. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, it would be a phased approach, and I mean, you know, it would be something that we could do. Yeah, the standard's pretty high, but none of these other places go. Trinity Place, up in Kenya, or whatever. Um, how about this, for the sake of time and moving forward, we will come back with a plan on disc golf, and it'd be something that ultimately we put together a plan, we have to take it before Dallas, they approve it, and we could potentially move So, Tracy, forward. all of this you're talking about, hopefully, come back in the summertime, you fashion, right? So, you don't. I'm going back to Ms. Branford's comment. Next two doors, and then I talk about the same thing again. I don't either, so yes. Uh, I feel we've already made progress on this one. I mean, honestly, we've got options to do stuff. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. There's okay. so much great land. Let's do something with it. All right. Come back. All right. We'll move on to Samuel New Hope. Just move to Barnes Bridge. All right. We'll move to Barnes Bridge. Let's do it. Is the same kind of contract? Samuel New Hope has the same kind of contract where we lease it the same way we do Samuel Farm North. Um, but again, we it's kind of the been the butterfly trails and concept that we're talking about. So it would just be a matter of coming up with a plan and going back um, before council. That's on the RET thing, right? Yes, Samuel yeah, New Hope is within the town limits. That could be right back to it. Okay, sorry. Bond Bridge? I was thinking about Bond Bridge. I was agreeing on Bond Bridge. I'm sorry. Oh, so the agreement we have with Barnes Bridge is an interlocal agreement with Dallas that we acquired Barnes Bridge when we signed the local agreement to acquire the front of the lake frontage. So what's our term? Do we have any? Are not acquired. The lease. Thing is, is we lease it. Lease it. No. Do we have How do they have this right this week? So this is four cars get out of kind of stuff. So we can spend money there. I do have a lease work. Yes, yeah. we lease it. We didn't acquire it. I said the wrong term. We lease it for long term. I'm just saying, can we put money into it without fear of losing it? Okay. Well, Pretty much. The they don't want it. I mean, they don't. I'm sorry? They don't want it. There are other municip It's similar to other municipalities around the lake edge, and they're all putting money into there. I mean, so. Dallas Water Utilities doesn't want it. But what is it again? It's not just that; it's the whole lake. It's the whole. We're responsible for the entire lake. Right, for the entire lake. But that's just the public access point that we can control and do stuff. With. But that's a. I mean, it's been years since I've been back there. But it's a park. It's. But it's nothing out there. Yeah, it's. It's. You know, it's a really interesting dynamic out there because it depends on what time of day you go, what you're going to run into. But if you go out there on the weekend, it was heavily used and there's families out there and there's the guys with their ice cream carts and all that stuff. And then if you went out there a little too late in the day, well, then you were experiencing a lot of different kind of activities. I think that's a cost, right? Yeah, I think that's a <laughs> The other concern is, as Stratton's yard on public safety side, we open a park Unless we close it at night, then we're, we're strapped again for some more public safety issues. Yeah, well, I think, I think in that in that part, yeah. Sorry, it would be a better situation to be able to close it. Mm -hmm. Close it at night. Close it at night, uh, 11 o'clock, whatever, I, and have... I think Tracy talked talk to something about it. But Tracy, well, Tracy. Yeah. To me, there's a lot of different factors, because you've got it adjoining just south with the landowners that own the land that eventually is going to be developed all the way down the lake. Um, you know, I'm going to get into it on the rails to trails, but there's lots of grant money. There's state grant money for boat access and boat improvements for public parks. Um, so if, you know, depending on what the landowners nearby want, then the town of Sunnyvale, if you wanted to, with matching grant money from Texas Parks and Wildlife, 
can get up to five hundred thousand dollars a year for boat improvements a year. It's an annual grant program. Charge a fee for that boat grant. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so there's lots of things that can be done with it that can benefit the town of Sunnyvale and Sunnyvale citizens, but also generate revenue that is for people from not in Sunnyvale coming to use the facility. And then depending on whatever the landowners want to do, I don't I have no idea. So what, what's the recommendation? What are you, what are you asking for? Well, we want to know what, what the situation with the council is about keeping it up or opening it. So again, I, I think I mentioned you right. So we had issues, um, lots of safety issues and concerns. Yeah. You all know that one, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really the reason why it turned it down. Right. And that Tracy was going to meet with the surgeon to figure out what are his thoughts. And I did. And Sergeant Evans says, you know, give it another six months to a year. He said, no matter what, though, you're probably going to run into the same stuff um, unless you keep the gate there, close it down at night. Um, we had talked about putting lights out there, and he said, probably in the beginning, you're going to come to the same stuff where you, they're going to shoot the lights out, so you'll have to maintain the lights. Um, he thinks vandalism will still happen in in the beginning, but if you just stayed on top of it, but then it all comes down to manpower. You know, who's going to close the gates at night? Who's going to open them in the morning? That requires additional staff to be able, or I'm not saying additional staff, but it requires staff to be able to go out there, open and close them. Um, and then I asked him about being able to patrol the the park and how often they would be able to do that. He said, well, right now they don't really patrol it, but every now and then, um, so if they had to patrol it on a more regular basis, then that would require more manpower from DSO. So you're looking at you know additional staff or DSO time to be able to do that, and then just the maintenance of figuring out what will be vandalized or not for a time period. I do know there are a lot of families that have, were fishing down there and that get calls all the time wondering what we're doing with Barnes Bridge because they want to go back fishing. We it. So there's, there's, you know, to me it's similar to the town center ask that you guys want us to come back with a plan of what you know you but also it's it's so what's the vision of the town do you want to develop that park and make it something that would benefit a lot of people or you want to keep it just nothing um, my vision is depends on potentially expanding the park but if you go to grapevine if anybody's ever gone to the vineyards park in grapevine it's one of the top ranked RV parks in the country and it's owned by the city of Grapevine. It's run by volunteers and it's a really neat facility. Now that's, you know, kind of the high end where you might want to go, but there's, you know, that to what it is now or somewhere in the middle, but with lake access, with grant money, with a lot of different things and then working with the landowners nearby, I think you could develop something that's really cool that's an attractive and, and revenue. Agree, right? So in your priority when does that come? Is that something near term, short term, mid term? What what's it? That's what which way of thinking or, or how have you thought about it? Well we haven't thought about it a little bit, but we, we need to know where, what the status is of both in it. I mean if we're looking at if council's looking at six months, a year, two years, three years, so my thing is that's for safety, right? So if we have solutions, if there's income, then we can put police on the system. It's right? kinda of like jobs and it's it's low priority unless yeah. you guys I'll say, hey, if you guys come up with a cool plan and we agree with it, we'll go live. If here's, you know, here's the way I would look at it. Because, I mean, it does have a history, a long history of security issues. But I'm not against coming up with a plan. I want a cost-neutral plan. Make it an RV park if you think that'll work. But it needs to be cost-neutral, offsetting the cost of the additional security that's going to be required. That, that type of thing. Yeah. Whatever it might be. I don't know what it is. That, I'll let you guys maybe come up with some until, until there's somebody living out there. Or do you, Which is you know, it's very alive. Like, I mean, even when, when the, the Smiths do begin to develop that to the south, you know, is it going to be retail? Is it going to be... Uh, uh, I, I, for one, have always felt like that that is probably one of the most top economic growth opportunities that this town has right. is that shoreline. We, we would put, not that the harbor's not already out of business, but it's pretty close. We would put the harbor out of business. You never build on the east side of a lake in Texas. You build on the west side of the lake in Texas. And you can go to Utah, you can do well, with what's going on in the middle of the lake. 
Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's such a, a, a potential economic boom for us. They can develop a plan. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's so, after all, so short, that funding, right? short term, it's closed. Development okay. plan. And, and come up with a cost control plan that takes into consideration all the Especially if you can think about grant money and that's all. I think yes, potential. I love it. I would have loved to have a boat ramp down there when I had my boat because I wouldn't have had to drive all the way around the house. It's an opportunity, man. Or one or more. Or two. Well, I'm talking to my wife. I'm trying to talk to him about it He's got a lake right behind his house. Yeah. You can go anywhere. Oh, my Yeah, that's right. Or actually, it's all right. the way down. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Next one's an additional parkland. Looking at acquiring more parkland, possible floodplain areas. I think Javier has uh, well, had a set up on <coughs> floodplain. Yeah, I just see a lot of the uh, parkland. Uh, the the ball fields in Dallas are built on flood flood floodplain land. That there's nothing better to do than uh, put some uh, level it so that it's nice and neat for kids to play. But I know in, uh, where I live in the east of Duck Creek Way, there's land that's in the, the floodplain and they've tried to sell it many times uh, and there's other land around town that's near the actual duck creek that uh, could be used for ball field so just thoughts on well, how to approach it how do we cut either we call call the people that own the land and say are you willing was, to donate it to the, the cause or? i was curious because i was at the meeting on last monday night when the developer was in for the neighborhood going in just north um, in Stony Creek, the Gate part, and then I mean, it was a lot of acreage that's in that floodplain. And he talked about the commuter nature center and then the trails that he's going to develop. But once he does that, then does, who's, does that revert to the city's ownership and we start mowing it and everything? The part that's north of the street going towards the creek? Or is that part of the HOA and they maintain it? I'm just curious because, like, up in Richardson, my last house, I was on one of those houses that faced Breckenridge Park, and across the street, they went and dropped off, and that was floodplain. And that was all natural area, and the city maintained it. And actually, somebody bailed hay in it, but then the city made <laughs> mowed paths, and then they had, we had bridges, and then you could go over to that, to the improved park. But um, that could potentially be a good... It was a lot of acres. I think that uh, not a majority, but a, a good portion of that acreage was a part of the original section, part of the original phase, which means that it would be taken care of by the HOA. So the nature so, center is going to be our responsibility. Yeah. Potentially. But that's just going to be. But that's a 24 parking lot. And where we do for the nature center, and I don't think that's defined right now. But that's a potential opportunity, it sounds like, because sure. it goes that. But it could be that the majority of the floodplain becomes part of the nature center grounds. Yeah. I mean, what, where, 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 where we're going to put the zoo or whatever it is. Sunnyvale <laughs> 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 Zoo? I don't know what we're going to do with it. That's a decent I just think that could be a potential win-win for the developer and the town. If it, well, and I, I think what we need to have the there in order to make that move forward is be the, the area that's outside of the acreage that's identified as the phase would be a negotiation between the HOA and 4B to acquire and just make a determination who's going to take care of what. Because maybe there would be room uh, for so a soccer field or two if it's not just purely nature area. Right. And, you know, the Fair Oaks area of, of Dallas, uh, you know, there's six soccer fields that are there across the street that are always flooded there. Right. That's all in so Or, you know, the Firewheel Golf Course. Firewheel, yeah. 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 But I think as long as a, I think, yeah, it's, it's a consideration to, to get on the list as you move forward. I, I'm, I would be open to it. I just bring that up because I know it's one that's a current. Mm -hmm. No, and it's the same, <clears throat> the same area. I mean, it's everything along Duck Creek. I mean, I, I used to live in Farmer's Ranch, and they have a nice creek where houses far away from it, but they so made that into a really nice creek. The answer is in general, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, buying the property and option is just a matter of the plan, right? Mm -hmm. And some sure things good because we need a lot more power. Find the right money and the right place and those donations, buying the more of these. 
It's all about identifying. So, Javier, are you speaking of the land that's when you say to the east of you? Are you talking about Spence's property um, going up to Lawson Road, or are you talking about everything east of Lawson Road? So no, yeah. I'm on Duck Creek Way. There's a map. Down there were, uh, yeah, over there. See where the, the sewer plant on the right? Oh, oh, okay, okay. So all along there, that's flooding, and then yeah. south of is uh, a lot of. So is that all in our ETJ? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all over the 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 town. I just know I've seen that oh. property for sale multiple so times. How do you ask him about the council if you open the idea to that? Yeah, or if you know of a way to. Uh, do the Jedi mind trick on some of these property owners that. <laughs> right. Hopefully, <laughs> I say go after donations. I think. Yeah. I think I, I'm personally for it. I think that's a great use of land that's not going to be used for anything else. It could provide more soccer fields or whatever fields, you know, yeah. uh, sports, sports Trading. fields. Yeah. Well, depending on obviously the weather, you know, when it rains, it's going to be flooded. But hopefully, they'll dry out and they'll be able to use. Most of that, yeah, most yeah. of that land is owned by a few property owners. Right. And that, you know, I'll just bring up Breckenridge Park again. And uh, Breckenridge Park out in the Panhandle of Richardson was owned by one family that owned all that land. Well, Breckenridge Park, half of it's landfill. And so they profited when they used it as a landfill. And, there was, and then uh, they worked with the city to do some zoning swaps. And then what they accomplished was. Um, they put in apartments out in what was out in the middle of nowhere and donated 500 acres to the town, which became a really nice sports complex and everything else. Now they obviously made their money off the apartments. That might not be the approach that Sunnyvale wants to go, but there's other things that potentially the landowners out here want. That's always negotiations. Well, and yeah. Speaking of negotiations, I mean, we do have 190 coming through that part of town. Can we negotiate a tax to buy extra land so we can build the, the, the trails along 190? They're, they're on our right. trail map that supposedly goes to 190, but I don't know who's going to pay for that. Is that that's that's not going to be tax dog, right? So we, when they do their land acquisition, is there a yeah, that they can acquire it for us and so we can build it. Maybe they're sure they want to do some sort of things and we try to talk about the south part of the college, they want to us to pay for the entire road. They, they really want to. Yeah, but well, and I was just going to say, the, the, this may be far reaching with regard to the grant and stuff that Eric found, but maybe in parallel with the 190 yeah. bill, that grant money kicks in mm -hmm. that lets the highway department or or Texas Tollway uh, built that long at the same time. But we probably have to be the one to instigate and nurture that to make sure that it moves along and happens simultaneously. Um, and I don't know if we have an individual within the town that would be that, that person. That's I know. We would have to on do. The, 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 rail, the trails piece on widening 80, mm -hmm. the bridge that used to be there, right. and that so I've talked to the text engineer when they had their open house. Yeah. Like, hey, can we work together to at least leave enough room so that we can have the pillars that will hold a bridge in the future? And they're like, oh, uh, yeah, let me so talk to our yeah. engineer. And I think our engineer has talked to them about it. So in saying, mm -hmm. having somebody in the town, mm -hmm. I think maybe our engineer could. It, it's just something, you know, it's just the it needs common connection. Yeah. And he attends all those meetings, so I'll just get the file. And so Councilman may ask before we and we've got two or three major items coming up. How long more do you think it's going to be I think it will take a ten minutes break, then we get a bio break. How long more do you How long more do you think you need? Just That's take a break. How long more do you think you need? Trip. Just take a break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's probably gonna be about another forty five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Nine fifteen? Okay. Yeah. So let me post by 9 today. How about that? That's fine. You get out. That's fine. Yeah. We'll cut it off. We made a lot of progress, I think. We got job relations right now. This was actually done in Burton. Burton did this one. Um, it was done in Cleaver. And they had several soccer fields, they had ball fields. Um, and again, it's 98 or so. We, even if we look at doing something smaller, depending on what we want, we can still end up spending. Tracy asked what I was thinking. I don't want to speak for everybody, but money-wise, it's just a tough 
map of finding money. That's really what it is. That was the beauty about the previous project. When the Walker project came, he was willing to go fund, you know, fund the project. So I worked for the citizen. That's why I started talking to the citizen right after that. Try to get some of them to buy it. But, you know, it's off the market now. I got it, right? I think we need to do some. Well, what's, what's the update on that land? Is it off the market? It's mm -hmm. not staying off the market. I think we need to do some forward thinking in that regard in terms of we have a, a number of build out population. I don't know when we're going to reach that number. I think the number was 15 to 17,000. Huh? It might be 14, 15,000. But whatever that number is. We need to look at that and look at for a population base of that much, how many different ball fields do we need? How many soccer fields do we need? How many ball fields? So that's already laid out for the, the, the master plan we have. And, and, and it may all be in there. So in, if that's the case, then let's see how much money it takes to do that, whether we do it as an individual, you know, a bunch of individual complexes or we combine some of those because it's multi use fields or something like that begin to determine how much land we need, and then let's go identify the land and what what resources it's going to take in order to purchase that land. I, I, I thought you know, one of the thoughts you're going to have is, I'm in mean, here at 90 acres and 50 acres. We don't have too many big parcels there. Yeah. I mean, uh, you've got the Luptons, but they're certainly not planning a, it doesn't look like they're planning a, an athletic Area. However, that and may be a negotiating point with them at the same time, but still. Be. And uh, the Smiths certainly are not planning that. Uh, we don't have any large tracks left for that. Do we have an inventory of the large tracks? I mean, I'm not sure that, you know, now that we just perhaps turned down the uh, Chris Jackson project, you know, that could be a 58 track. Across from the school, don't know the price of it. Uh, I guess that reverts back to Lupton's now. My understanding. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if, if, when you mentioned across from the school, one of the ideal locations would be the phase five of Stony Creek yes, and South right of Main. Yes, I would much rather see a sports complex. Just for? Oh, I mean, I you know, the school. that's on to bankruptcy, I guess. Right. Yeah. But that, if they'd be amenable to it, that would be, a, you know, because people in those neighborhoods are really used to lights. So, yeah. My experience with this, and I probably have the most, at least at this point, is with a kid that plays a lot of baseball, 18, uh, well, plays 18 years, but, uh, is these are private enterprises. So, like the one Jim mentioned that he spent some time at this weekend. Uh, you know, those are owned by organizations, and they are big bucks, big bucks for them and for the towns. Um, it's every weekend, it's fall, summer, spring. But as far as our town needs, ball fields for Sarissa, all that, to me that's a little bit of a different thing. You know, if they could be combined together, like we worked with that gentleman where as part of the deal we could get to use the fields at a certain point in time. Um, because the number, $9 million, was, was he was throwing out a way higher number than that. Yeah, and some of the ones that we play at, there's no way those cost $9 million. So, well, his were turf grade, and he brought the price down. Yeah, and you have to do, if you're going to have the tournament-style stuff, they have to be turf. They have to be, or you're, you're going to lose money. Yeah. So Franklin is the only one that I know of in Texas. I don't know all of them. But it's owned by the town. But that land, that's out here, uh, outside of College Station, that was donated uh, because of oil money. That was, a, that was just a donation. So um, so it was kind of a note. So the town just had to build the, the fields, and it's a huge money maker for them. Um, but to me, those are two distinct things. So you were talking about us building out Sunnyvale. Ball fields for Sarissa, I think that's a need for sure, but the stuff we're looking at here, these complexes are massive um, endeavors and expensive with sports medicine complexes and indoor facilities. Um, 
you know, they're, that's why Marucci was involved. Well, we don't even have anything to quality of Valley Creek or anything like that. No, sir. Right. did not cost $9 million. No, correct. And they don't take 90 acres either. Correct. Now, I don't know what they do. Don't, yeah. don't misunderstand. I don't know what they do, but they don't take 90 acres. They only take 50 acres. Right. right. And they've got, Valley Creek's got soccer and baseball. They have four baseball guys. They have football yeah. as well. And they make football. Right. And so, so the lot there, less than 90 acres, and they sure didn't spend 90 million, right. 90 million. So. And I, I wasn't against the guy bringing his complex to the walking property. Yeah. I just didn't, like I said a while ago, we couldn't make the math work for what he was bringing to us. And that's all we asked is, hone your numbers, give us a little bit better picture of what it is that you're trying to do, because we can't see how your math is working yet. Yeah. And. I mean, we would have probably been in, I would have been in for it if we could have just seen how the math worked. And it wouldn't have been a cost impact, because you're right, there's there's big bucks that can start coming into the, to the town of coffers as a result of that. So, to your point, and, and both your points, you know, so you've got the for-profit ball field sports athletics complex on one end, and then you've got municipal athletic right. facilities. Yeah. Parks. Um, that's probably more realistic is what I was getting at. And that's probably more realistic. Yeah. And that, that's kind of where I was headed because that's where that money's, the money comes from these guys. Right. That, that rather than coming to the to the town, it goes to economic development, you guys to be able to do things. And I don't know that we're going to build a $9 million sports complex with the money that you guys get. I, I would love for us to be able to, but I don't think we're going to get that. And that, that project there, it, there was 25 acres of improved Bermuda. There was 25 acres of common. Um, it was fitted to operate off reclaimed water. Uh, so there was some, obviously, the, yeah. the concrete expense, things of that nature. Um, there were concession stands. Um, but the, the back end of things that a lot of times gets lost is the M and O after you build it, mm. and mm -hmm. yep. so like that one had a five hundred and twenty thousand dollar maintenance yep. M and O budget. So uh, it did bring in a lot of tournaments. Um, it is a money maker, like you said, for the organizations. And uh, if the usage agreements are right uh, yeah. with with the town, if it's not dialed in initially, then it really presents some opportunities for some people to make a lot of money and others to make zero. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> but, uh, With regards to location, just keep in mind I live in Gated Stony Creek on the northern side, very edge, <coughs> and not just light pollution from the football stadium at the school is an amazing yeah. difference. Um, when the lights are on there all the way to my house, it's the noise pollution. I can hear the call of the game in my living room. Um, so and you got to think my neighbors had a toddler. It was waking the toddler up, you know. And so it's just something to consider putting a massive multi-game, multi-thing going on next to the schools would be a big impact. My, well, my problem you know, that is <laughs> the yeah, municipal sports complex. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Putting something huge back there would have a big impact on the right. place. These things go all weekend. Mm -hmm. They go all weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Later tonight, too, don't they? Living room, I'm oh, sure yeah. she does, too. They go all all the night. Yeah. 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 Yeah searching for, you know, looking for open land, looking for those big parcels and trying to still partner with the developer to, um, you know, a company to do a big sports complex, or are we going more of the municipal, trying to help service a route and piece together what we can with our own budget? Uh, my, my vote would be the municipal route and try to mimic kind of what Mesquite and other places do and maximize parking with the school. If we can't do that, you know, if that costs too much, but it's, to me, it's 
provides the best use for the citizens of Sunnyvale to have municipal <coughs> facilities mm -hmm. that all kids in Sunnyvale can utilize. Um, and if a for-profit organization wants to come in and has a viable plan, then well, yeah, let's support them from an economic yeah. development yeah. standpoint, right. not a we're doing this for the benefit of the kids right. Right. park and recreation right. standpoint. Because it's not necessarily something for the kids that you're doing it for when you're doing a program. I mean, that's, that's economic development. That's right. right. That's Hopefully you're driving development. sales tax revenue, and then, yeah, the kids that can participate and qualify at that level, well, yeah, then they Versus quality of life, which is what they're just still paying for it. Versus quality mm -hmm. of life. Which both of them are your money. Yeah. But it's just how you <coughs> have to look at the structure. Well, that's my. I agree with municipal. I, I mean, a, a private type deal. You know, when, when we first met with him, he's thrown around Marucci, which is, you know, that is deep, deep pockets. And, and I was like, okay, because I'm thinking they're going to put sure. a bill. Sure. And we're just going to benefit. I mean, they would want incentives and all that. But <coughs> I'll take hotels and just all the stuff that I use every weekend um, would be great. But I don't know if we're going to get that. It sounds like there's not a whole lot of options left for them. And those that are available would be. Pretty expensive because you would need pretty good size uh, to make it worth their while. Um, so four or five municipal type fields would be fantastic. Yeah, I like the idea of having it maybe close to school or uh, you know you can use their parking. I think you brought up the Oklahoma track. You know maybe you know great world maybe maybe that'd be. <coughs> It's just neat yeah, when you go great to deal different for places like the Pete that the for-profit places lease the facilities on the weekend and you're mm -hmm. typically parking in a school parking lot while you're using the municipal facility and then there's a municipal operator out there running the, you know, the snack shack and stuff. But. So we'll figure, just because I know time is getting people ready to go, um, we'll look more into that and see what we can come up with. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Any other questions on that one? Ball fields? No? We're all good? All right. Move on to master trail plan. So in this one, a couple of things. One I have, this is our current trail plan. Um, the green spots that you see are existing trails that we have. The red dotted are future trails, and there's one little private trail system that we have here. Also, we're kind of doing our own work in figuring out where the connectivity is missing on some of these trails. So in our current plan, what you see here is what we have. Um, Eric was so diligent, our planner went out and walked Homestead Trails this weekend with his dog. And so what you see in black is actually the trails. It says that they were existent, but they are existent. Um, this section is <coughs> existent. This section is existent. Um, then there was, he came down here and walked Stone Canyon. And that shows as a trail, but it's not a trail. And so we're trying to work on walking the trails ourselves and figuring out what we have and what we don't have. So Dotted is what you need to Dotted Dot is what is future, yes. That's a creek part, what part of the Stone Creek thing is. Mm -hmm. All right, right. So what is the existing trail? What's the come of the existing way? Green. Existing tree? Green. This one works. <laughs> so the whole idea of this was just to show you that this is what we have, this is what is in our plans, um, to see where we're connecting and where we're not. Because you hear from the HOAs that there's some disconnects and how do we work on those? Um, but you know, when, when you look at that, the dotted, the red dotted areas are where there's not any development. Well, and some so. of these, like so, this. Trail is in existent now um, with Clear Lake Estates. Um, this was a future through the Glacier Tract, and then this one is in existence. So we'll update this and um, 
I mean, this one right here is probably happened because they're building all this out now. So that one's probably getting pretty close to happening if it isn't already. But, of course, this is a railroad right away. There's not anything developed here. Well, no, it's in this area here that that's, some of this is fixedly developed because we just approved it down there. But right here, no, that's going to go. This is, uh, none of this is developed. And it's, so those trails aren't going to go down until it does get developed. So the. So this is what, like 10 plus being developed? Is that even high plus six on the trail system? Uh, just, yeah, just the green line versus the red down line, right? Yeah, this right here, it might not even be 5%. Yeah. Over here. I thought you had just 70% and 70%. But again, the majority of it that's not developed isn't in the place that's been developed yet. Okay, Tracy, so what's your point? So you have a plan, okay, you have so, here, and then you have to go here, and touch it. So you had tasked us with going and yes. seeing what the different connections are and how much they cost to figure out yes. what we can do. Yeah. So we're going to. So I was thinking at that time, yeah, 70 plus, and then 30 plus should be done. So if you can go pick yes. the next. So we will work on that, but so that you see what the trail plan is. Okay. But the major topic of conversation more for this point is talking about the Rails to Trails project, okay. and um, so I'm going to let Eric. Show me that path again, page three. basically following this right here. If you want, you can pass this over there. It's easier. Yeah. Better color. <coughs> Do you have copies for us all? <laughs> no. Print around the name of this one. I want to go on to from 2015, I think. But, um, okay. So, rails to trails. Um, one of the main reasons I volunteered and came to 4B was because of my vision of what I was hoping to accomplish with Rails to Trails. And, um, you know, when we go back in time and pre-me being on 4B, you know, the town and members of 4B, 4A, and other council members put together the master trail plans together. They in include the Rails to Trails plan, and it's on that future trails map that was done before many of us were in the positions that we're in. Um, in 2016, the opportunity came up um, to potentially go active fairly rapidly with acquiring and then developing uh, the, the Luminant Energy uh, Trail Corridor, Rail Corridor. Um, so I'll pass around kind of what the facts were back from back then so we can get those correct. If you don't mind passing those that way. <coughs> there you go. Sorry. Um, when we went active and were trying to accomplish that plan, the major hurdle was the acquisition of the real portal. Hindsight, I believe almost everybody was in support of the overall plan, but there was a lot of sticker shock involved in it. So the document that just got passed around to you is actual cost outlined for if we were to move forward and go active with that plan. The plan was to go, um, if approved, was to break ground and complete most of the project in 2018. So if you go all the way to the bottom of page one, the total cost at that point was estimated to be six million six hundred eighty thousand dollars nine hundred nine seventy one. That included the bridge for one point three million dollars to go across eighty. Originally, we planned on doing it without the bridge, and then uh, after going to TxDOT and North Central Texas Council of Governments, they wanted it. They were highly interested in this plan, but obviously that sticker number is quite large. You flip to page two. And where this was going to be funded from... 6.6 is all of it? All experts? Correct. Not counting acquisition. So you got to acquire it first. That's what it cost to build. 2016 prices. Yeah. So, what's that? And 2016 prices. Concrete. Yeah. That was estimated at building it in 2018. But yeah, so now it's going to be higher. Okay. Um, 
The part that I don't know, because we weren't involved in the presentation that was given, the person that gave the presentation isn't here, but then, you know, it got turned down initially by council at that time. Um, this was going to be funded through a matching program, and what's illustrated here was the matching dollar. So the program, and I verified the day through TxDOT, I visited with both TxDOT and North Central Texas Council of Governments, and a new announcement's coming out for 2019 applications. Um, and so the plan is, or the grant program is going to be live once again. It's a four to one matching program. So for every dollar that the town of Sunnyvale or nonprofits that are part of this contribute, you get four dollars paid towards the plan. So the town of Sunnyvale's cost was going to be $1,617,214. Where do I see that again? Page, page, two, page two, two. The second number from the bottom. Of that $1,617,214, we also have, and I've got the document here somewhere, 500000 that's already been committed to us, and we have a legal document <coughs> by the county of Dallas. So for that one, it's a one to one match. If we come up with 500000 and Invest it, the county of Dallas will give us the other 500,000. So that gets us to one million of our dollars. So maximum is 500,000? Correct. Got one time match, 500,000. Here's the legal document signed still off bad. by the judges. That's still bad. The right. commissioner's court. Um, How long is it good for? Is there a time limit? No. I won't, and then we'll give it to you. You're the attorneys. <laughs> Um, additionally, we were told, and this was approved by TxDOT, you know, it would have to be something we run back through the city manager's office and confirm, but TxDOT and North Central Texas Council of Government said, yeah, that money you could use towards it because you're incorporated into your plan. So my understanding is that there's money that's been escrowed to put in a tunnel under Collins Road by the developers, right? Safe route. So, yeah. Right, and, um, and that money was somewhere, I can't remember what the number was, but I thought it was around half a million dollars as well. They said if you incorporate that tunnel into your trail program to include, in which when you go through the whole rails to trails, we weren't just doing the rail to trail, we did a couple of connecting routes. They said, well yeah, that's part of the plan. So that escrowed money could be multiplied times five. So if that was 500,000, you get another $2 million grant money. So by just and by so, putting that connection in the port plan? Correct. So out of pocket, the town is out 500000 You get 500000 from the county. You roll in that escrow money, and that is the town's out-of-pocket cost, other than acquisition. Um, now if you you know, remove the grant money and, or the county's money and you remove that escrow money, it's still 1.6 million, which fits within 4B's budget. Uh, backing out and going to some other granting um, establishments, we have Safe Routes to School. So Safe Routes to School, we partnered, met with Doug. Um, we did a Safe, safe Routes to School <coughs> program to evaluate the ins and outs to the campus and all that. That was being incorporated in as well. TxDOT and North Central Texas Council of Governments loved that we were doing that. There was a separate grant program with a $5 million cap, the same four to one matching dollars. So in both instances, they said, hey, this budget, you know, we know you're gonna go over the $5 million cap. Don't worry about it. We love this project. We want you to do it. And this is for a one-year grant application. To me, the rail to trail, if that's you know, we want to, whatever we end up naming it, is the artery of the future planned trail system for the town of Sunnyvale. Um, I've only had a few people that have asked me questions about it. The ones that have been um, curious and understand, well, why do we need it? It was more from a financial standpoint. And when you walk through the financials of it, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I see it. There's only been a couple of people that have been opposed to it. And they have some viable reasons, but it's typically because of the two neighborhoods that they live in that are one's semi-gated and one's gated. 
um, and just their understanding of what's going to happen in their their neighborhoods. Stone Canyon, all but one person I've talked to in that neighborhood is in full support of it. They love the idea of it linking so their kids can get across and get to the school. I'm on the school finance committee. It would allow the school to drop busing to a majority of, um, or not the majority, but a lot of people, which would save them money. Uh, so to me, it's a, you know, the major artery, it links north and south, and then we build out going east-west to fill out the rest of the program. Um, this chart, which I won't pass around, but it basically is 16 granting agencies under the US, US DOT, US Department of Transportation. When you write, read through what all they include, it's not only for this type of a program, but there's grant money on the bottom one here, paved shoulders for pedestrian or bicycle use. And you read through what the requirements are, it's like if you're building a road, we'll pay for the shoulders to be paved so it can improve pedestrian and bicycle use. There's all sorts of other things in there in terms of even just park benches and stuff like that. But 16 agencies um, granting all sorts of specific projects. Um, let me ask you a question. I know you talked about grants. Grants is really, you know, that's free money, everybody loves it. In the past, I used to push for that with the previous management. One of the things I heard over and over again that Sunnyvale does not qualify for. I want to see any grant, but good number because of the median income and the situation we are in. We are not like other cities. What, are, what is your take on that? Or what is your... Uh, yeah, no, the what is text dot, again, in this, it's um, these granting agencies all have to do with transportation. And it's, I mean, it's kind of a weird, you know, web of EPA. So, you know, they've got all the stats in here for each kid that walks to school this many days a week, it reduces greenhouse emissions by however many thousand pounds a year. And so it's, the money is coming from all sorts of different sources. Um, and it's encouraging fitness, it's all sorts of different things. And it has nothing to do with um, the finances of the, okay. uh, the particular community. So, so examples being that I looked up, I mean, it was a lot of kind of upper end Communities are the ones that are getting a lot of this grant money because they're the ones that are doing the project. Katy Trail. Correct. <laughs> Katy Trail is a great example. And it was done. The railroad donated that right away. Okay. And then a not for profit developed it all. Um, we've also have a not for profit. The person that created it has since sold his house and <laughs> moved out of Sunnyvale. But it's thing? still live and active, and it's the Friends of Sunnyvale Trails. Okay. And members of that are wanting to you know, begin to participate through um, Texas Parks and Wildlife, there's 10 grant programs that we can utilize for the trails, as well as, you know, uh, Kevin's really interested in doing a, um, a rec center. Well, there's a million dollars a year in here that can be granted. It's an annual grant for indoor recreation facilities. So there's such a large amount of money that's available. As long as we have a plan and agree on what the plan is and articulate it and work towards that common end, I think we can accomplish the majority of what we talked about tonight, as long as we work together towards that common goal. I don't believe we communicated the cost benefit structure of the rail plan well the last time. And granted, you know, we had to get the acquisition. So that's the big hurdle on the rails to trails at this point. We stopped communication with the power company because, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with it. Um, they were amenable to selling it. Um, we've since done more research and believe that the original survey that was done, the original survey and um, appraisal that was done, they used a cross the fence appraisal to come up with the value of the rail line. So if it crossed through, like it goes through her neighborhood, they were valuing it based on the lot prices on either side of it. Well, it should be substantially discounted from that lot price, in my opinion. And David Holly came up with some numbers. And in my view as well, I think the town has a little bit of control over us. And you guys aren't mowing it. You're not maintaining it. I don't know what the tax level is that they pay on it, but it seems like, and Chris was, last time I talked with him, he 
was throwing around some legal ways to potentially have the town acquire possession of it. Um, but I think if we get to the right person within the power company, and it's not, it's not it's an investment firm, it's owned by a private equity firm, um, it could be a win-win for them as well to donate it in a favorable light. Um, we develop it primarily through the use of grant money. Yes, it requires us to do some out of pocket. And then there's the ongoing maintenance and expense to maintain it. Any idea how much would that be? Rough idea? Um, I don't have it in front of me right now, but we did. We do have that number. Barrett, from what I remember from all the conversations, I, I, was, I was for it. We just couldn't figure out how to do it financially. That I, that I remember, that's the reason why we didn't go forward with it. At that point what in time, it point required point? it required a lot of things to happen right. Yeah, it, it, it had to do with the grant money that can only be applied for every two years, and we should be applying for it now because they give it out like in February or something. And then the, the cost of the land, if I remember right, was $4.5 million? No, it was, we got or it appraised down. Or appraised at. Right, we got it down to one point six. Okay, yeah. okay. And so, so and at one point six, we talked it over and said, "Yeah, we think it's more than we should pay for it." But based on the long-term value, we still thought it was a, a viable. I was just thinking, and I might be remembering this wrong, that we said, "Let's put it on the back burner because we missed the opportunity on some grant money." We and, and in fact, Tracy and I talked about this over the past few, few months. I I thought we were supposed to be pulling it forward come this year because of that, I don't remember if it was part of Parks and Wildlife or whose money it was, it was going to become available every two years. That yeah, the Texas Parks and Wildlife is annual, the due dates are October 1st. Okay. Um, and you can't actually apply retroactively for Texas Parks and Wildlife, so when we move to Glacier Track, that's a great place to talk that through. Yeah. But any of our connecting trails. On the North Central Texas Council of Government, which is money that comes through TxDOT, that comes from the federal government, uh, those they haven't announced it yet. They told me they're going to call me tomorrow and give me the estimated announcement date. Um, and then you got to do your applications and everything. That'll be by the middle of next year. We already have it prepared. So we're ready with, to go. With David's last. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. It wouldn't take much to revamp it, right. but there's still the hurdle of acquisition. So you either have to you have to control the property; you don't have to own it. So even if the power company was willing to sign a hundred-year lease that you have control of, then you can move forward. <laughs> so let me ask you a question: If I remember looking at David's numbers, the appraisal of that acquisition is probably more than four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. If the appraisal is correct. Right. And the tax value was like three something. Right. So, did y'all look at the possibility of having somebody like Morris purchase and donate, and we name that trail after them? We haven't moved forward with any of that yet. In terms of what are the other options? So, I've researched the board of directors and had a long list, and we were starting to do a kind of an attack on who knows who and who can network with what. Sure. But the naming rights of that trail, somebody Correct. building I agree. land is, is a possibility. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we call it Luminate Trail. Or even Luminate, Luminate Trail. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 I, I, don't, I don't mean donate, but give us the money to purchase that, and we can name the rights after them. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Friends of Sunnyvale Trail, I think, would do better at asking for donations than, Very possibly. than the town. Than the town. Or representatives Very possibly. in our role. So if I heard you, first of all, I'll tell you, that was one of the best presentations that I've seen in six months. Top to dollar, timelines, money, data, thank you for your time. I appreciate that. The second thing is what I heard is that this possibility, we can get this thing at no cost to the town. Fairly close. Fairly close. Considering low, the total cost, low, low cost. Right. The town <laughs> still has to, the town or the not-for-profit, the, the team, has to come up with that first dollar yep. to get the full. But correct, with the other committed matching dollars, and then again, I know there's the escrow, but I don't know. The number I was told was 500. I mean, I don't know if that's right or wrong. If, the, if we get down to 500,000, somebody else is doing all the other stuff, it almost sounds like. But by incorporating that already planned tunnel, 
wherever it's going to go to access to the schools. You know that that money can be allocated towards our dollar. And that's one of the reasons why we were jumping on this the last time, because we uh, Eric did a lot of the work, but we knew that the ultimate cost to the town of Fort B or whoever was going to be minimal as long as we were able to proceed and go with the grants, you know, and, and push forward on those grants and the bottom line was like, well, we got this whole thing and it cost us whatever. So you had to keep thousand dollars just to know. I mean it was like, man, you couldn't pass that up. So that's why we were pushing for it yeah, at the time. So if there's enough support for this project, what do you think that's the next several steps in timeline wise? Timeline wise is we would move back forward with I don't believe we'd need to bid it out with other contractors because we've already worked with David on the grant application again for the coming year. They would also it. take a group effort. They're hot. David McCaskill. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's the one that put the whole. He's the one that put the plan together before. Put right. this trail plan together and the cost and came up with all the estimates and all that. And he's highly experienced and highly thought of. I've he's a grant re writer? researched him in hindsight. And, he's a grant writer? He's, yeah. he's a grant writer? No. Sorry, he's an architect and trail specialist. He did the, the bridge that's at Mockingbird Station. That's one of his designs. And so we, we, we are using his service? Correct. Okay. We have in the past. We have used his service. Yes. Um, but would be to continue to work with him and then as a group effort research and decide how we want to approach the property owner. The last time we approached the property owner we went through the you know lowest ranking individual and I, I get it his job is to make money for the company. So you're talking about the power company, right? Correct. So he came in and we want X and we said we want we'll do Y and then they came back with okay, we're okay with Y. And if you and look at it, stop. if you look at it process wise, is there a situation where you think if you don't get to this sort of decision box, if it doesn't meet this criteria, this is gone? In other words, I'm assuming there's gonna be several boxes, right? In other words, it's gonna cost us ten million dollars, six million dollars. Probably this won't be the right approach, I'm assuming, right? But if it's gonna be you get this money, okay, maybe and I can go to the next if I go to this money, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so the, again, the number, one, the, steps. the number one in the critical path is checking off the block of acquisition <coughs> slash control. Okay. So you can move forward with the full grant writing, grant approval, as long as you have control. Okay. So if we came to an agreement with Luminant okay. to give the town control okay. with the caveat of we get approved for the grants, before you close, you still can move forward. The now, you want to check, either we get free or if we get a, if write a check, we'll write a check only after we get the whole thing is working. Right. Is that what you're saying? Kind of the same thing we did on the board. In other words, we don't, get the, we don't end up spending $400,000 and still on the property with no way out. Well, yeah, and we don't get stuck paying $5 million to finish out a project that right. we thought we were going to get. The project left to paint in half over. Right. And the, <coughs> the North Central Texas Council of Governments, I mean, they don't approve the grants unless they know you're committed. So, I mean, their goal is, and they, I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. I mean, they're like, you've got to factor in overrides. You have to factor in inflation. You have to factor all these things. So don't come to us asking for three, and then you come back and say, well, the program's five, because they're just saying, we approved X, not Y, and now you've got to figure out how to pay for it. So, so let me ask you, if, again, I'm just asking for if, if you decide to move forward, would that be a situation where we end up in spending a lot of, maybe you answer this question already, we end up in spending a lot of tax dollar money, but we cannot take it out of the goal line because of? I don't believe so. So as soon as I know that the new grant is available, <coughs> and we get the verbal confirmations again from them, I, I'm confident it would be 100% funded and complete as long as we work out the acquisition side of it. And to me, that's where we need to agree, and that should probably be in closed session, what's the max that yeah. the town would be willing to go on acquisition if they play hardball? Or do we take, you know, again, they're a utility company, 
technically they're a private investment firm, but it is, you know, an energy core tour, so they have their legal expert towers just as much as the municipality does on the use of that land. So we can name it, I think that's what Mark said, we can name it after the other thing donated to us. We can name it after the internal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris did bring up a couple of legal options that he thought would be viable, and so it would be something to ask again. So are you looking for a, a, a thumbs up, thumbs down from the council, whether it's the interest in moving to the next step? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. I mean, I believe that every, I believe everybody's interested in moving forward with it, but that would be the next closed-door thing would be when you get to the acquisition of the property, what would be the... So anybody, the, anybody opposed to this moving forward? Okay, sounds like no one is opposed to it. All right. Good. Nicely done, Eric. I appreciate that. Well done. All right. Thank you, sir. Running out of time here. Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> Less than two, Nine, two, two, two minutes. And you guys have a yeah. Laser property. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut to the chase. Cut to, okay. cut to the chase. Yeah, I'm like, okay. So, so when Tracy, uh, Mike, um, we talked a couple of weeks, maybe a week or so back, because I want to meet with him about the place made in Calabrese tonight. I remember Tracy coming back and asking for X amount of dollars, ten thousand dollars, I think, to bring the RFQ for the consultant in. Uh, there was a discussion at that time. I believe the Glacier Trial Committee was moving forward with two things. Uh, bring some sort of equestrian facility and trade, mix of what it is. So at least some council members thought that the goal of the RFQ was to figure out the best use of the property. Tracy did explain to me when this was brought to the council a few months back, the agreement council made was to split between these two. Uh, and if Tracy said that's the decision, then that's fine. So what I told Mike and Tracy is, maybe the first question here is, is the council as it stands today, Tracy, I want to speak for it, I just want to get to the, you know, get to the point, right? Is the, is the current council comfortable with just moving those two options? And Tracy, I'm going to let you take off from here because there's a bunch of questions. I well, think that's a really well thought out process in the mind. Just to kind of, so in July 2017, the town and the EDC bought the property. In November, we formed the subcommittee to discuss the property because there was some discussion on um, what council thought and what the board thought. So we put together the subcommittee. In the conversations with the subcommittee, it was, um, we came before town council in April of this year, an RFQ to move forward with the Sunnyvale Stables. And at that point in time, both the 4B board and town council had approved to spend up to $10,000 to move forward with the RFQ that was presented, which was for Sunnyvale Stables, which was just stables, maybe a little riding arena, um, washing station, tap room. Um, so we moved forward with the RFQ process. We ended up hiring a firm in that time period. We got a fee proposal, and when the fee proposal came back, it was a a little bit more money than the $10,000. So at that point in time, last month, we brought it back to the 4B board, brought it back to council to be able to approve $3,000 additional funds from each of the entities. 4B had approved to move forward and continue down um, with hiring the firm and getting a master plan development of the property. And council had decided that they wanted to take a step back and see if that was the best use for the property. So that was why it's being brought before y'all tonight was to kind of discuss what those options are, what council's thoughts are on wanting to move forward with this property, um, whether we continue down the path we're going or if there's another route somebody would like to take, just seeing some, some direction. I mean, the discussion was to get, have a discussion with the Ford B and council to understand what is the common desire. Is that or not what I understood from that council meeting? Yes. Because I know Fortune was not talking in favor of the property anyway at that time. 
But uh, we bought it. No. Yeah. I got it. We bought it. We were not. Yeah. But today we are here today. But we're here today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We, yeah. We're, we're partnered with it today. That's why some kind of you have it. You have it. You have it. You have it. You're doing something with it. So. All right. So. I mean, I'm not mistaken, the RFQ was supposed to include trails as well. It wasn't, right. just, it wasn't just a state. Yeah. Right. It's okay. some Christian facility and trails, right? Yes, it was going to be trails to connect. It was going to be trails with the hub to connect to other neighborhoods okay. as well. So the first question for me is, does this council agree with that mission or not? That's the first question. Tracy, well, you take it with the other Sure, order. no, you're fine. Yeah. I, I just want to, if okay. not, the RFQ has to be started again. So my concern in September was that the RFQ was too narrow. Why, if we're going to spend thirty or forty thousand dollars to the study, we're already saying we want to do something with horses, we want to do something with stables, and we want trails. I'm just wondering if at this time we should make it broader so basically what can we do with this property? Is there, are there other uses or purposes that we can use it for? Uh, because my concern is that the RFQ, if we follow the RFQ and we get the results back and we have to put in $300,000 to make a bunch of stables, that might not be economically feasible this time. So then we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure out, okay, what are we going to do with this property? So instead of having that, what well, I think is a real risk okay. of maybe not being happy with our results from the RFQ, why don't we make the RFQ broader initially, so at least we have other options to look at? So, so that was my concern. Broader, I mean, what are, you, what are you looking for? I don't know. That's why. I mean, that's why I think we're paying for consultants, right? I right? think that, from I, I my perspective, um, we had a lot of discussion on forty about the horses and do we like the horses or not. And it seems that we've come to the consensus, depending on if we can get it for the right price, that the horses are a nice part of the town's ambiance, that same branding that we keep talking about. So it's not, it's hard to put quantifiable value on keeping the horses there, mm -hmm. but uh, there was a lot of discussion leading up to that RFQ that led to us putting it out in that way. Right, and I'll just say personally, I am for. I like the horses. I like to drive by the drive by every day. I do like the horses, but just wondering, in the long term, you know, is that the right thing, or is it is it going to be feasible to do something? Because yards face yeah. each other. We're sitting accordingly for this reason. So He's on the other side. So after the property was bought, it was posted, and you'll see the fate that this is what we're doing with the property. Is it will. The plan for the property is to allow the horses to continue to be there. And during that point in time, the overwhelming responses that were given um, came back pretty heavy in being able to keep it the way it is. Um, so at that point in time, that was why the direction was, to, that's why the RFQ is so tailored to what it was, because that was the direction at that point in time to continue down the path of having it, the open space with the horses, um, because so many of the citizens really did like that concept. You, you, you might all remember, before you guys were on council, that this was proposed to be a housing development. I remember that. Yeah, this was proposed to be part of the Glacier. This was the Glacier property. Right. This was uh, uh, the same people, actually. And that just did not go over well at all with either neighborhood. Certainly did not go over with the horse people who were being run off their property. And, and, and through much uh, discussion, I guess, uh, uh, you know, the town ended up buying the property. And they bought it under the pretense that all the neighbors around there, plus others throughout the town, Wanted to see the horses stay. Well, I think we've all done the pretense that the actual land was going to be actually cleaned up and that it was going to be used for something in the long run that could be useful and not well, just left in its current up. state. No, I didn't intend it. I didn't even imply it was going to be left in its current state. We talked about what it would look like if the town took it over. But 
the intent of that was it was remaining as a horse or an equestrian type use. We weren't going to, we weren't talking about building a library there or a rec center there. Uh, we weren't talking about building a different housing project there. I mean, I know that there, you know, you could have taken the 14 houses, made it six houses, but I don't think anybody wanted that. So uh, that's how it became uh, what it ended up being in the uh, RFQ was a continuation of the uh, of that equestrian type use with improvements. Uh, I think if you decided to change that, you would, would open that can of worms all over again with the neighborhood <coughs> saying, why are you chasing the horses away? I think it goes beyond just the people who live right around it. You know, I don't live around it, but for me, it's a thoroughfare I go down a lot. It was one of the things when I drove into Sunnyvale the first time to look at uh, property that I liked. It drew me to Sunnyvale. I was consider considering moving either in Dallas. I didn't want to go to a suburb, um, but Sunnyvale attracted me um, because of the way that it looked and being the horses and open space and being more of a small town country feel. Um, so when we, it came available to purchase, it seemed important to keep that as, I forget what, what is the term that, why are you weren't hearing that at the time? Uh, as a central part of the town that a lot of residents pass to keep the feel of Sunnyvale that we're I mean, it's a big challenge for us to try and identify what are the ways that we can keep it as we're growing so quickly. And that seemed to be a key part of the town and the feedback I've gotten and the feedback we get on Facebook, it's um, not quantifiable, but it still, for the most part, supports that and with the horses too. But the question is, can we do it for the right amount of money? Um, and the only way to find that out is to go through this process and have a drawing and a quote done. Um, we often get to this point and then freeze because we don't want to spend any more money on something that might not actually happen and then nothing ever happens. So, so I'll say that I've probably raised the most questions about this because I have no problem with horses. What I have a problem with is how much are we going to, how much tax dollars are we going to spend to enjoy the and so, going back to your survey, I agree, we can ask a survey that says, do you enjoy the horses? Yes, but if you ask a survey question and say, you want to spend one and a half to two million dollars to enjoy the horses or your tax dollars, the answers might be different. They might be the same, but they might be different. So it's on how we ask the question, right? And so, if we want to head down the road and spend the, the $13,000 or whatever it was on the RFQ, that's fine, but in the end, We've started someplace and we don't really know the end game here because we, we know it's going to be, I guarantee it's going to be more than a million dollars to build what that RFQ said. It, to build a stable, a new fence, and make it presentable the way we envision it, it's a million dollars. So, so I guess the question is, us 4B willing to partner and spend upwards of a million dollars to have uh, as something that a very, very few of the citizens can actually use. Maybe you put a trail around it that, that does add more to it, but something visual for our town. Are we willing to spend, are we riding into it for what, 300 and, I don't even know what we bought for, 300 dollars $400,000, we're riding into it for $400,000. And now we're looking at spending, I mean, we can let the RFQ go and find and see how much it's gonna spend, but are we willing to go to our taxpayers and say, are you willing to spend this much money to look at something? And I agree, the residents around, hey, I love driving by there and seeing it, and those residents around there are fine, but if you ask them if they're willing to spend a million dollars of tax, tax dollars to do it. Ryan, we have that same issue with everything we do. Like, what? Well, Town I mean, Center Park. I know, but, but, but <laughs> a horse, everybody goes there. But you have to own a horse to enjoy that place. Well, right? I, I so you have to actually enjoy it, other than just look at it. You have to look at it. You have kids to play on ball fields. Yeah, but you, have to have, you have to want to walk on trails to go on the trail all the way from Sain to, to uh, Orange look Bridge. At the numbers, Jim, you have to agree, the numbers would way out. I mean, I'm not sure it's a job. I'm just saying, though, that there is a, a number of people in this town 
that if you say, would you be willing to spend a half a million dollars on the rails to trails, they're going to say no. Just as they might say, you want to spend a million dollars on a horse pasture. And you may be right. I guess my so, point is, is that that's fine. If we want to spend that money, then let's, let's put it up with a vote. Let's put a vote out. So well, I have the same question you did about the, about the RFQ, because I'm like, I, I wouldn't want to spend a million plus dollars on a huge horse facility. Actually, when we first when we first bought this land, we were told the town couldn't actually own horses on land that the town. Well, not, um, yeah, we weren't planning on. Owning yeah, horses. we weren't. This wasn't meant to be a horse pasture yeah. in in our original mind. It was meant to be trails connecting our existing trail system with possibly a gazebo and a fixed up lake. And then it morphed into something else. The conversation. If you can do all that and have horses in the middle, I'm all about it. Right. So and, and, and that was the thing. So then it, then the it turned is, into the horses getting You don't have to build a million dollar equestrian for sure. And that's true. And, that's true. and, and I agree with that. Open stables. Open stables. Open stables are much cheaper. So here's yeah. here yeah. I'm gonna weigh, all you got to I want to weigh in on, on that part of it. Because I'm going to tell you, I've, I've got some friends that actually own equestrian centers. And their word to me is what we're looking at. Right now, in a horse ghetto. <laughs> right. right. And if that's what Sunnyvale is rural, then I'm going to tell you, I take a different exception and I drive down Johnson Road. But if we're going to build something, it shouldn't look like that, mm -hmm. in my opinion. That's just me. It should look like something that looks like what this town wants it to look like. And I think you're looking at probably around three or four million dollars. So I don't think you're looking at a million. But if they want to, I'm not opposed to horses, but horses are extremely destructive. They don't just eat the grass, they chew it down below the ground. It is, an it is an destructive animal. So if we want to do that and have a private person maintain that, that's great. But in the, in the condition it's at now, I'm gonna tell you, I don't enjoy looking at it. Just, for, just to be honest, the horses that have been bred there, two of them have been put down in the last year. So if you start asking those questions to the town, you're like, well, what are we looking at? Hey, I like animals. I like the long ones, even though I think they're kind of dangerous. <laughs> and, and I like the horses. I, I do. But every time I drive down Jobson Road, what I see are two blind horses that I feel sorry for. So if we're going to put horses there, it needs to be done right. And I'm not opposed to the horses. Well, we're, but I'm just we, not we opposed agree. to it. Okay, we agree. Okay, great. We're going to do it right. I just, but we're not looking to put Lone Star Park out there either. Oh, no, no, no. This no, is no, what no, we no. keep hearing. No, I don't it's think like, that. You guys are putting out Lone Star Park. You know, this person <laughs> called Bruce, <laughs> you know, you know that's why yeah. you're doing I mean, study. it's a liability no for the town. Right. But I thought the RFQ sits. Yeah, I thought the RFQ right. yeah, was I agree. Yeah, some definitely. options, and I thought the RFQ was also to tell us how much it was going to cost. But as we looked at it, the RFQ didn't really right. give us that. It was just going to tell us a drawing. So then we have to have another RFQ to find out what it costs. So, Is that right? Uh, no, I, had, I had you all's concerns, and I was kind of, I was, though. Tell you, I was like, I don't want to pay money to yeah. to do this because I don't want to pay to build the facility. Because my thought was, why aren't we doing an RFP mm -hmm. and get put it out there for horse operators and say, if you came in here sure, yeah. and you ran an operation and you had, have, you know, if we carve off whatever where the because the trails were a perimeter trail, it's not like there's <coughs> crossing or a big loop or anything. So if you had X amount of land and we signed a lease agreement with you, like the current one, for a dollar a year, for 30 years, and got five people to, you know, or get nobody. If you got nobody, you're like, well, that's because nobody thinks they can make any money even in a dollar a year. But then it was explained to me if this was more along the lines of with the professionals who designed horse facilities, because I'm not, um, to come up with what could viably go here and what it would cost. And it was supposed but, to be like plug and play options, mm -hmm. I think, where we could kind of, water, sorry, like plug and play options, like, oh, pick yeah. and, like pick and choose, like from minimal to maximal options. But then so, you can take those so, options so to an operator and say, would you want to build this spend? with some lease agreement, or would we want to build something for whatever the number is? Because to your point, if you just had stables that you could lease out with somebody, but mm -hmm. you know. Let me throw out I don't know something. Going to make money at it. I'm, I'm going to take a real strange turn here. I, I don't disagree. Again, all the years I've lived here, the horses have been there. I've not been real happy with what that corner's look like, but I wanted to save that corner. 
but something that's really come to life from a technical perspective that we don't have all the data behind us yet, and I don't think anybody has ever even thought about, and that is, but it's, it's come to my realization after all these heavy rains. Yeah, that might have to be a giant lake. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, in order to solve it is a lot of the, it I, I, no, I don't think it needs to be a, a giant lake. I think it needs, it might need to be a two-tier detention system where the first tier is not in there yet. Right. The, the second one exists. But in order to, and I'm not just trying to protect some residents downstream. I'm trying to actually get water out of the M streets upstream to uh, uh, upstream to include Homestead, the new phase of Homestead that's gone in that does drain through that glacier pond. Now, we can't get the, uh, yeah, drains through the glacier pond. Now, the new glacier development, there's no way you'll get it to this, if you will, new detention. It has to go to the glacier pond. There's no way you can keep that from happening. But I, this was part of the reason why, and I didn't realize, I didn't have this realization. I was actually thinking about this yesterday, or no, maybe it was the day before when I realized, wait a minute. Let's quit worrying about the horses for right now. We may have an entirely different perspective on this when we get the drainage study back and find out. And this was what I was hoping for with the, the, with the RFQ or the RFP, more precisely the R, an RFQ, is the RFQ would have gone at a more global perspective from somebody that got all the input about what was going on on that piece of property. And Maybe I'm, I'm all awash in my thinking, but Saji and I spent a Saturday afternoon driving around town when it was raining and people were getting mm -hmm. flooded. And we're kind of doing our shade tree mechanic uh, uh, mm -hmm. assessment analysis. And it took me until yesterday sitting down thinking, I think we need to rethink this again. And thank goodness maybe we haven't spent, a, I, I, I'm not against it. I just think, Maybe we need to get this drainage study report back before we proceed a whole lot forward to make sure that we're not going to screw something up or keep something continued screwed up. Maybe there's a way we can solve several problems in parallel. When is that coming? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Tomorrow. Next week. I can't wait. Until tomorrow. That was, that was a, a question that I brought up uh, probably two years ago on this uh, when, the, when the pond itself, which isn't that deep really. right. yep. could have been dug out. Well, and when Which Homestead, would have made it deeper. And when Homestead in, went in, Chris Jackson went in, he spent, I don't remember, one of you guys might remember, three or four hundred thousand dollars. Well, they hiked the dam. And to hide the, the dam, dam and put in an overflow. And, and, and he did a lot of good things to it. Right. But he didn't impact anything that happened on the M Street. And any of the water that's on the south side of Trip does eventually go and goes, eventually gets into Long Creek one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Well, the less load we can take off Long Creek, then the less of an issue. It, it's a two sided thing. We're really going to protect two people downstream. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing this to protect those two people downstream. I'm also doing it to get water building up in his culvert. To the point that it it almost it gets into your garage. Well, it's going to keep it worse. And, and there's yeah. and there's of course there's a sewer line along there that Johnny can tell you that the 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 leakage that goes into that sewer line when we get these major rains increases our sewage charges that we have to pay Garland mm -hmm. because of the amount of flow that's getting into that stuff, which is a whole other issue that you guys don't necessarily. Well, I guess maybe you could, but it's I think we just need to maybe tap the brakes for a minute here and make sure that we've looked at, get, get the input from from what we know today. So, let me just ask this question. We start at 6 o'clock, it's going to be 10 in 10 minutes. <laughs> this is an important topic because, we, we, again, I, I'm one of those guys who hate to kick the can down the road. I just don't like it. So, we got to get to that and make this decision, right? I'm going to ask you somebody. Cal, I saw an email from Caroline that. And Karen is one of the four measure track committee members. She had some really awkward questions. I mean, she just tried, I forgot, maybe 20 or 30 questions. I thought she well thought out questions. She's not biased one way. She's had questions in group. She, want, she was asking whether everybody can answer that question, kind of set the direction. 
I don't know whether you guys seen the questions or not. So basically she's asking, do you want to start the property? And she's even asking that question. Do you want to build a Christian facility? Do you want to be operated by council or town? Or do you want to be operated by independent party? So here's the she, I have point was before we go spend too much money in course in Russia, at least we can have a consensus on it. So you have not seen this question, have you? No. no. So, so no. the only I was going to, the reason I said this, I like those questions, this open-ended question, she was not trying to direct anybody one way or other, right? So would it be worthwhile if Tracy sent that question out to Fort B and Council? I don't know whether how to plan, pay out, I really don't know, right? Is that what, what, what do Carol want us to do? Well, she's just throwing those questions out just so that we think about it. Okay, so it's think not going to be easy to think about 30 questions in the room, right? Exactly. So would it be worthwhile just sending out? What do you think? What's on the table right now, in my opinion, is do we spend $16,000 for our FQ over here, or do we spend twenty or $30,000 for an FQ over there? I mean, that's what we do. He's got thirty dollars or $40,000, we're spending sixteen. dollars So, I mean, we got to figure out who's going to do an RFQ. Are we going to do one to find the best use, or are we going to do one to maintain the equestrian look that we, the previous council, moved forward on. Well, one of the other things I wanted to say about... Uh, we're not going anywhere until we do that. Where we are now is the company that we chose, the equestrian expert, uh, has a lot of experience designing everything from a $10 million facility down to um, a less than $1 million facility. And one of the things that was most impressive is that everything that she does takes into account the feel of the town or the property that she's designing for. So uh, what we would ultimately get in a design from her, she can tailor to how much money we want to spend. She's able to give us options as far as this is what you can do for this amount, this is what you can do for this amount. And she can make sure that it's in keeping with the way we want Sunnyvale to work. Who is she? What should we give one more? Uh, she's the working with David McCaskill. Yes. Who is this? She? What is her name? Yeah. A consultant, not this much. She's an equestrian and okay. barn building expert. That's all she does. Um, and she will operate, or she like the wise one? No, she's uh, um, the one. No, she's just going to do another consultant. She's the RFQ. 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 So the only one that keeps in mind is, um, I guess when looking at what to move forward with this property on, is um, Lyle came to me this afternoon and said, don't get rid of my detention pond. Um, so the, yes, the pond is a, a huge asset that has to stay on that property. Um, just the one furthest to the east. Um, there's actually two on there right now. There's so much rain. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that one hasn't had anything in it in years. Jim may remember better that it, there used to literally be a pond there and it didn't dry up. And it, but that was a long time ago. And I don't remember what they did to keep it from happening. That's not dry. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not a built up pond. It's not really a built up pond. It's just a low area there. And because of what the soil is so saturated, it's got water in it. So we have, you know, the homestead and Clear Lake Estate drains in there now. He's working on a plan for something else as well that would potentially drain into that property. Um, so keeping that side of it is going to be an essential piece that is going to pretty much have to stay. It probably has to stay in open land anyway to do all that. So it's but I think Bill Allen needs to get further down his path, and I hate to kick that can down the road, but. There's the technical side of this that I think needs to be better understood. Well, that doesn't prevent us from going. The third option is just do nothing. Well, I think it does. We've done nothing for 30 years. <laughs> I think that's what we have though, Jim. Wouldn't you agree well, on I, that? I don't disagree. That, that, but I if we can't come to some agreement, we can always do it like we did. That's the other side of this equation right now is yes, these are pictures right here that are what the official. Out. You'd have to tear it, the tear it all down. Yeah. Um, it's pretty bad. It's all the interiors. What would it cost? Here's to what our building official has said: that right now there are so many code violations out there, being exposed to electrical wire, improper installation of electric, unsafe. There's a lot of safety issues that are out there right now. Um, My question: When we move back to the, in his professional opinion, he would recommend demolition of all the structures. Yeah. Yeah. My question out. about that: When we acquired the property and had the lease agreement, was what liabilities the town have? Some so, kids say, out there. Say, and that's what somebody gets electrocuted. Yeah. 
Right. right. That's actually, I brought that up in our meeting. What's our liability, both for the structure as it is, and then moving forward. What? Moving forward. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So we and can't leave what it. Our, what will our liability yeah. once we actually build something? So we had just have to think about that, you know. So every, you know, you guys have been thinking about this for years. We had the committee that's been set up and then thought about it and whatnot. My concern was just making sure we had options. It sounds like we maybe will have a fishing, a pond for fishing on one side, hmm. and then horses on one side, you know. So. Um, and a trip. And, and trails. Trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mainly one exactly. trail. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The trails were the main From part. The right. Cross right. And, yeah, and, and, and I, I'm not. We can find it clean, yeah. fairly and come behind your back. Here. The horses on the property. Right. We're all for that. But right. The, but any equestrian, I, I guess I actually personally have a problem with the use of equestrian. That's where we want to not. So maybe, right? So maybe we just maybe semantics. Maybe it's just just you know keeping the horses there. A stable. That's why we. So what I think is Cheryl? No, I, I guess me personally, just me by myself, I my desire for this property is to have it nice, clean trails and not have damaged buildings. And if we have on my hoop. The town can still own it. We have it as a park, and we have the trails connecting to our other trail system as part of our master plan. If we can find a nice way to keep the horses and keep it, you know, uh, natural looking, that's great. But I'm not in favor of us spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to create an equestrian center. That's my it's, that wasn't so. The small that, 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 that wasn't our real goal. Real quick here, it wasn't our goal, here. and the committee is not looking at, like I said. Lone Star Park. I mean, we're trying, we know this is a liability. That's what we were looking at. It's a liability for the town as it sits. We need to do something. So if somebody gets out there and mm -hmm. gets hurt, they're not going to come to 4B. They're going to come to town. town so I'm, I'm hearing Jim, and I'm hearing you, and I'm hearing Kevin, and y'all are saying it needs to make financial sense. With the person that's contracted already, mm -hmm. um, I believe he could do what Kevin's asking for in terms of do the thing for the horse plan yeah. and then potentially throw in plan B and C to here's what, based on my experience, could potentially be other uses for this or best uses of it. If we change the RMQ, we, we have to go back out for it. Forbid. Yes. Yeah. Right. So and, so and, and I'm not sure. You know, I don't think there's a lot of other options, so maybe, you know, so to me, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a speed bump. I don't think there's a lot of other options. The ground slopes down to the one side where there's all the water pooling up, you know. It's, I mean, there's there's not a lot of options there. No, it's in a you know? floodplain. No matter mm -hmm. what you do right. on that property, whether we build stables or something completely different, it's going to have to be built up. I mean, that's just, there's no way around that, no matter what you do to that property. It's going to have an impact on the number of stalls and the number of animals. When you, when you know that. Right, it sounds like we do need to wait for the the drainage study to come back and then also allow the, to figure out if he wants to make another detention pond for or all of have enough data. Maybe you know? he knows now. Right. But, but, but I guess, but. you know, maybe if we move forward, you know, I think the uh, the consultants should definitely talk to... Uh, How long do we wait to make it safe? I See, I think we can need four... I, 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 it's so unsafe. It's a danger. It's really scary out there. I think we do need to. Now we have an official report from a building guy. We have a yeah. Right. I, I think. I mean, I the think only way I, to make exactly. it safe is to a victim, and mm -hmm. and that was well, the, when this was originally done. They were given one year. Nothing's going to happen. Well, it's now been passed to you. But we've got <coughs> new tenants now too that right. are taking this over. That. You know, they don't know that all this is an issue. So, I mean. Really? <laughs> it's, it's been there for how many years? So, nobody's yeah. ever said anything to this point. So, now because we well, are actually we're taking a look at it, we're seeing what's out there. Seriously, so here's the thing with, with the people that are in, in charge, I mean, they're, they're, nice, they're nice people, okay? They have spent a ton of money of their own on 
repairing, fixing what they can, using whatever they can. Okay, so they, they've done a lot themselves, but it's still a bad situation. They're just out there patchworking because they don't know what we're going to do. Can we, would we well, be willing to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars to hire somebody to get this thing up to code at least? I think it's not going to get up to no, code. No, whatever. We get somebody to tell us that. I mean, get somebody I can tell out you there. that, Ryan. It won't cost you no. a dime. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your expert opinion. <laughs> I know it's not, but I think Rod's saying, can we spend some money to fix it? Well, all we fix is demo it, rebuild. I know, then you're getting rid of the very reason we're keeping it. If we have the agreements, they take the yeah, horses. We, I mean, yeah, I don't know how we can evict them. the horses when we've just posted how we're saving the horses. <laughs> I mean, I what kind of PR nightmare is that going to be? I, I think we need to take action. I, I think we, you know, if, it's that, if that's... I posted it. I posted it because that was what was the direction was given at the last year when it was done. <laughs> Somebody said who posted it. I said I posted it because that's what the council decision was at the date they decided to purchase the property. From the town's perspective, what do you think we should do? To me, when the property was purchased it was very clear that the council's desire that was that those horses would stay I think we ought to make the stable safe and if it means we rebuild stables cheaply quickly I think that's what we should do and then we can figure out long term but I think our immediate need we got to think about the town well, project not. because when we start doing things for town regulations we got to put in a concrete parking lot and take yeah, that's right. Well, so you got to think about things that we don't have to do. Better. I know, but if this was not our property and the inspector went in there to do it, we we condemn it. That's mm -hmm. what we would do. Mm -hmm. We condemn that building. Oh, and done for thirty years. I know, but I'm just saying now that we've had a building official go out there, it's and it's expect them to go out there and, there. <laughs> and put his recommendation to writing. Yeah, he put his recommendation to writing. We're kind of we're kind of in a bind. Yeah, we're never done. Look at the slide. It's like cats out of the bag. Yeah, yeah, it's. If there's anybody else we knowing that we would condemn that building, just like that house that was before. So I think we kind of have to go through the RFQ to show that we're actually trying to move forward with a plan to replace these dilapidated buildings. And they would have to come up with a plan to house the horses while something else is being built anyway. There has to be some sort So they keep when they come back with this plan, mm -hmm. somebody's a plug anyway. Then what happens after that? Well, then we have to get and pick the cheap option. Right? Okay, so we <laughs> pick the cheap option. Then what happens? for us as a town, and we can choose whether we want to move forward with that. I know. So my, 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 my question is, does anybody think the town is going to own it, or we are talking about still letting a third party own it? Uh, do you want to no, horse? No, do you mean, we want to be the horse business, or do we want to just? No, we, we never had that envision. Either. Okay, I got. It. I'm just kind of walking through the process in my mind, just kind of check off the horses. Right? We don't right. actually know that. Right, we don't know we for sure. We can create. Okay, so let's do it out there. We could fit it out to a third party. Okay. Uh, there's all kinds of options you could do. So, we could let it quest or something like that run the thing. So, so what I'm asking is when this RFQ, let's say we end up when they're in this what does that person come back with? Comes back with a plan with options and costs. And then. So the cost is an opinion at that time, right? Mm -hmm. The cost is an opinion. The cost reason is if you go let someone else do it, they're going to say this is the cost. Well, it's, right? it's like an OPCC, like an opinion of probable construction costs, the okay. same that you would get on, a, on an engineered project. Then what do we do? We go for that not at that time? So you would send it out for bid if that's what you wanted to do. If you got the got the plan back and you wanted to move forward with that so send it out for bid. What we want you to build? Yeah, we'd say here are all the specs, here's okay. what we want, tell us what you'll build it for. Just and like you do any other. You spend the money you build it and you order it. Well, that's up to you. That's up to you. So, but if you wanted it to be a municipal you know, facility. Yeah. Until we sell it to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. So we can operate it ourselves. Yeah. We can lease it out to somebody else. Right. Or we can sell it. So that's my question, right? Let's say we don't offer it. Just call it. If you're going to lease it out, does this RFP have? 
I'm asking, I'm not, I'm not telling you no, I'm just asking. If we lease it out, that means we would build it and then lease it to an office. Awesome. So we are going to spend the money to build it, then we are going to lease it. If we do it that approach. If you do the another approach, you do a land lease. Right. And you give them a long term, really cheap land lease, but right. then they build and they run and they make, make all the profit yeah. and we have our trail. Right. And then in 50 years, you're like, okay, well, then you renegotiate the. So, would that, would that side be what we're looking for? Or do we still want that big master plan? Give us guidance as well as whoever the potential operator would be. So. That's a win if you can find a way to operate it and bring it up to code. I'm excited about that. Are we going to find anybody to let them operate? Yeah, we yeah, kick out the hard. existing. Yeah, because most horse people, I mean, similar to what Larry said, I've talked to, said it's not big enough to be profitable. Yeah. And well, so and it's more of a, it's more of a HOA. So, so the, yeah. the individual that leased it for the first year of operations sent me her financials, and they did not make any money no. yeah, on leasing that property out. I mean, they're not making she's money. She's limited what she can ask for because right. of the state of the um, facilities right. that they are. So if you, if you, if you send out say that it could be like a telephone lease with somebody and they want to come back with an acceptable plan, more of that maybe, right? That means yeah, the current party has to call us, he or she wants to do the same thing. I think from what the discussions that we've, or the input we've gotten back from the experts we've talked to, I don't know for sure that this is true, but it seems unlikely that that property could be something that would be profitable enough for someone to come in and operate it and build. Um, it's not big enough. You know. Okay. Yeah. So the option of giving the property away, basically leasing it out for one dollar, that uh, is not going to happen, based on that opinion. From what I've heard, so far, that's my opinion. Okay. So know. then, what happens at that time? So that means, okay, let's just keep that option away. So then the option of leasing. Well, I'm, I'm Larry and I were Air Force people. I grew up on an Air Force base, and you had horse stables that were maybe for fifteen people government-owned facility, you know, and somebody got paid to run it through MWR, but I mean, it's going to be a small 10 to 15 horse facility when you have a professional look at it. They're not going to say you put 25 horses out there. And I don't know what the going rate is, but when I was here and for a nice place, you know, five, six hundred a month, you know, I rent with, per I stall. I a lady at Garland off of Guthrie Road that runs mm -hmm. um, a nice, well, it's a decent facility. Sure. Um, and she only has like 10 stalls there. Okay. And I mean, she does training, she does riding, whatever else she does, she makes money. Mm. Clearly, she's doing okay. But does she, does she want 10 more? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she, her, her opinion was if we put something, because she knows exactly where it's at. And her, her opinion was you will feel that if you have a decent. Stay. Right. You'll feel it. You'll feel that in a heartbeat, and most of the people will be from Sunnyvale. So, Mike, the question is, who will build it? In that, in that vein, after I'm just trying to get to in that vein, it would have to be the town. It would have to be us. Four yeah. people on this span, have, you know, whatever three four thousand dollars to build a stable. Right. I'm running. And you would do it as no. a. No, we wouldn't run it. Someone else would run it. Someone else would run it. At least you, you want to spend that. You, you potentially. You that that and you're willing to do. Yeah. I, I can go three, four hundred thousand. I mean, I, I'm okay with that. So at least it means at no cost, right? Basically, no cost. It's leased out right now. That lady right. owns it. Yeah, sure. but we are not expensive. Well, right. we don't. But if we built the thing, right, I mean, she might run it for the, the same thing. That's true. I mean, so somebody's going to lease it. So the court, again, I got it. I mean, just trying to walk through the process in my mind. But that means it's the right. decision that. <laughs> as a quality of life expansion, are we saying that somebody for me maybe going to spend four hundred thousand dollars, and that's it, just like we'll get popped with the no ROI? Is that what we say? Well, is the town willing to pitch in some money as well, not just yeah. the four B's and Glacier, Glacier mm -hmm. property? It's also the town. So, I mean, there needs to be a. I might have to report you to a code violation. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't even know what that cost is. I know. Yeah, but maybe that. So, would the RFQ get us to that this point yes. of building this stable? The RFQ will get us to the point of being able to decision. determine the cost and wow. what we Let's see as. Yeah, I don't see. <laughs> I don't see what the difference is. And spending three or four hundred thousand dollars to build the staples, and spending three or four hundred thousand dollars to build three ball diamonds. 
Or a splash pad. Or a splash pad. I agree with that. There's a limited number of people in this town who are going to use it. There's a limited number of people in this town who are going to use a horse pasture. But everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to benefit from the green space. You know, I, I don't see the difference. Okay, so, no, okay, so I think, yeah. As long as the RFQ is, I mean, they, I had to look at it. It, it, it includes the low cost and the not medium cost. We don't need to look at the $10 million or whatever. Okay. Okay. okay, so, so, so I think we have, we have coming to summit. So we talked about a horse pad, something like we will do it. So that's that value. Currently, the RFQ only include two things, right? The trade and the horse. Because the trail is a done deal. Yeah. You know, yeah. The trail is done. We've already talked to the town about that. The trail is going down from the connection uh, behind the falls. Mm -hmm. It's already there. The concrete is already there. It's going to connect and run up trip between there and the fence. You connect up at Jobson in some kind of maneuver to go across the... No, <laughs> even, same way. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get to a point that I know this Kevin, you mentioned about we want to include other options. Are we still on that request? I, I mean, well, I don't I think, think there's. Point about the fishing pier. Right, exactly, we fishing. About a gazebo or <laughs> the fishing pier, yeah, right, the right. Line. But yeah, the no. Not, not is today. accessed by the public through the horse pass and the parking lot. Yeah, because so there's where you have to trail from around here from the north, and so yeah, you'd have. Yeah, it, right. it's access. The fishing pier is a good deal, but you're going to have to cut the public off from the horses, right. which yeah. takes up half the pasture. Well, it takes up a good portion of it because you've got to go to the parking lot. I feel like the community, based on the number of people I see fishing out my backyard every day, I don't feel like we're overrun with the need for more fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's maybe two people. Palm has eight fish in the whole park. Yeah, there'd be 15 right. people fishing every day. <laughs> <laughs> fish you know, now, now, one thing I had, we were talking about with Samuel Farms across the place, if you did end up with a decent thing there and encouraged it and we mowed some trails, people could take their horses across the street mm -hmm. actually yeah. really enjoy riding out there. That. That would be same so let me ask one last question from my perspective. Is the expectation that if horses are built there, stables, put there, whatever, that there'll be some sort of a parking area and maybe a covered pavilion or something so people can actually really enjoy the horses? Or are we just talking about enjoying them when you drive down the road? Not, not You'd have to, it would have, have to, to include parking because there's, yeah. there's already parking. Yeah. 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 It has to be concrete. It has to be concrete. Yeah. Like yeah. Is that all part of the out of you? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think we should move forward. I really okay. Do. We need to do something. We need two things, right? Trace and Christian Fisher. I just want to make sure. That's all we talked about. We won't include fishing. <laughs> and a bowling alley. You can fish from horseback. Yes. You ever see that on the machine? I want to smash that thing. <laughs> just one of these. Okay, so can't, this isn't an actual meeting, so you can't take official action. No, this is a workshop, yeah, so just keep in mind you'll have to you'll have to put it back on the agenda again, just okay. to make sure everybody knows. Do we know the young people? Crazy. Well, then throw another wrench in there. Okay. How big is the wrench? Pretty big. Okay. Um, but I think we're going to have to have a just because I just got uh, another reminder about it. Fire chief wants to know about the possibility of putting a fire station on that property. What property? Glacier. Right there, possibly. What plane? That's up to the town. I want to have to discuss it. You go. fire station there. They can run all that long. It is central. It is a central location. He has seriously talked about it. It should be a town handle. If they build the parking lot, they can have. Put the fire station no, there, let's put the rec center there, and yeah. the library there. <laughs> That's That's great great. Great. Then you have your fishing pond. <laughs> yep. And a horse mural. <laughs> and a mural, there you go. So you got the horse. You can put the iron horse in there. Thank you. <laughs> we can move. Um, so, the fam's outside of the scope. Of the yeah, area. exactly. So let's. let's uh, it is, but. It is outside. How, how much yeah, land do they need for a fire station? Well, that's, that's not for tonight. I kind of think that and this uh, is how many both that consideration on the as well as the <laughs> possible drainage consideration needs to be a part of the information that the consultant has yeah. to make the assessment of what is practical and being able to do that and what is not practical and being able to do that. So strangely in my grant research, there's 
<laughs> Ten different granting agencies that will grant money for stormwater impacts related to pedestrian and bicycle projects. So based on where our master trail plans go, that can also be incorporated. We can get pretty good chunk of money on that. And the rail project to me would potentially be a culvert to offload all the schools during the So let me ask you the glacier track committee. Since May, Chief asked the question, is that something they can look into or that's going to mess up the whole thing? That's a fee. No, no, no. There's an eye for the out there. So I'm just wondering. For the fire station, is that what you're saying? That makes school to horses. I don't think anybody's looking at that. I think Josh is looking at that. Quality of life for the horses. That's a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Okay. They built that whole thing. Oh. So, Mike, what is next on the agenda? Go home. Thank you. All right. Can I watch the video? Anything else anyone wants to talk? Thank you for meeting with us. Absolutely. Happy to meet you in town. Thank you. So I'm going to, the time is 10.17, I'm going to attend the, the workshop at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. So 